my man not much sorry we're a little freaking half hour late normally it's only 15 normally it's only but, uh, 15 so we doubled the amount of lateness tonight but it's all good it's march madness man we all go a little mad sometimes right that we do that we do uh so tonight as always you know to continue march madness we got lucio full cheese night uh Black Cat from 1981. Nice little arrow release, courtesy of Scar Pad. Um, yeah, man. I saw all your Fulci and, uh, you know, Argento movies this year. So I was like, yeah, I do like that reversible one too. Um, so I had to add something good in here. And I remember watching this a few months ago and uh, right before you were, sent me your list. And, uh, Saw the Fulci, obviously, and then Scarpa had sent me the Arrow release, and I was like, this actually be a pretty fun one. Yeah, um, for sure. Yeah. As we got some guests in the house, we got our sweet little baby. What up? What's going on? We're tag teaming you for just a little bit here at the start. That for sure. <laughs> Patient. Patient. We got Link. What's up, brother? Stephanopolopodopolis. What up, fellas? <laughs> I couldn't have myself. Haven't said that one in a while. But definitely not. <laughs> Scar I got my yeah. liquid death. Rocking some liquid death. And thanks to Two Gun Pedro. You'll see more of it later. The, and the icon of horror, my burial ground T-shirt. I oh, proudly God. wear it as burial ground enters a new realm. 4K coming soon. T-shirts. Scream six. Who needs it? Burial ground, baby. Burial ground. <laughs> Don't worry, Madison. He doesn't talk the whole show. He'll be fine. <laughs> Sorry. Just most of it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I love you, Scott. Uh, More two gun stuff later. Thanks, two gun. Yeah, I had to send him a t shirt, didn't it, Jeff? It wasn't enough that he <laughs> mentions it every week. He went 450 but, uh, miles. Yeah, so we're here to review. Not easy to find this. Yeah, that's for sure. I'm sure it wasn't. I'm sure, though, he found a whole pile of them. 
They found, they found them in a warehouse. There's a whole warehouse, burial ground, DVDs and Blu-rays and <laughs> for some reason. And 4K is coming soon, baby. No one ever sold them. They just it's the same Blu-ray, man. They just put a 4K uh, <laughs> logo on it. That's all they did. <laughs> They're like, this shit ain't gonna be any better in 4K. Just put a put a logo on it. <laughs> so probably man, you uh you might have to um the only horror news I got is screen six. Yeah, I don't I don't have any horror news for this week really at all. No, I didn't notice anything because nobody wants to go up against the giant that is the release of a new franchise horror film slasher franchise screen nobody wants to drop news that week because everybody's focused on that you know what i'm saying could be that's for sure and i think a lot of us here have seen well, screen yeah, and i think six. Yeah, I think a lot of us here have seen Scream 6, and I think we're planning on doing some stream coming up in the next week to do some spoiler talk on Scream 6. And I can't wait, because I know that yesterday, me and Verno were chomping at the bit. Like, we wanted to go live immediately. Even like, today. Yeah. For real. <laughs> Even today, Scarpad was like, let's screw Black Cats, because I know he's not the biggest Fulci fan. He, he prefers pieces of shit like Burial Ground instead of works of art like zombie, but we you know we're not gonna hold that against anybody. <laughs> Pedro got that um that Bureau Ground t shirt custom made. Could be there was no licensing. That's yeah, some real no. <laughs> license, baby. There's no license. No merchandise. Yeah, no it licensing. was a cheap license, but it was a license nevertheless. We should license it. Fuck. Yeah, we should. As <laughs> much as we talk about it. <laughs> We're retroactively um, going to make that a cult. How Scarpet <laughs> believes it is. It already is. A cult favorite. Mm -mm. Black yeah. cat, baby. Um, so I guess we'll just get into the to the movie then. Um, before my, my Wi-Fi just shits in and out like it's going to keep doing it. So y'all see me really go on a rant. Go back to the old school. Talk shit about Donny Kate. Stay and me flip scar. Sent me uh, this copy of you know Black Cat. So you must somewhat like it. I I think maybe. <laughs> oh yeah, full cheese opposed to my level. Fuck oh, God damn it! I'm getting pissed and off already. Hey, what is he gonna keep popping his shirt up? <laughs> All right, tonight we're talking about the black cat. That's right. I you think you're having deja vu. We've already talked about the black cat. No, we talked about Dario Argento's black cat that was just done like nine years after this one. But it's time to talk about Fulci's black cat, which was done first, and not the first time that the the Edgar Allan Poe story was uh, adapted into film. And just like every other adaptation, bears very little resemblance to the initial uh, short story, but it, it definitely has a Fulci kind of flair to it. What I mostly mean by that is that it's got a lot of shots of eyes because Fulci yeah. loves eyes, sure. the eyes of horror. And I in horror stands for Fulci and Italian. So this is an Italian horror film. It's not a giallo, right? But it is an Italian horror film. And first time for Fable and stuff, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming, I don't want to assume. Oh yeah. Oh All yeah. Right. No, it's so safe to assume in this. This safe is safe to assume. All right, well, yeah. let's go ahead and get into it then. Fable. First time watching Fulci's Black Cat. What did you think? Oh, I'm sorry, guys, man. I found this one incredibly boring. <laughs> um, it took about 22 minutes for this movie to even establish itself. It's a whole bunch of scenes back to back. They didn't know what was going on, and then... When it finally started getting itself together, it was just like watching a film about a bunch of people trying to figure out what we already knew what was going on. <laughs> the supernatural cat. And then the cat has like no um, motivations. Like, I don't even know why this cat is so pissed at this old guy. 
<laughs> and why he wants to kill everybody. <laughs> The evil um, black so, not I, I, I didn't enjoy this one too much. Sorry to, to start it off like that, but yeah, first time. Mm. Never apologize for giving <laughs> us an honest, authentic opinion, like at all. This I, I'm going to be honest with you, man. I'm a Fulci mark. I'm a nut for Italian cinema, Italian horror in particular. I'm, I love Lucio Fulci. This is not the best representation. No. Of what Fulci is, okay? At Scarpet all. thinks so. <laughs> <laughs> and you're right. I mean, the, 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 what, the cat, what is the motivation? Like, I'm sure Fulci's sitting there explaining to this cat the motivation, right? But, like, it takes a minute to get there because <laughs> still, I, I've seen this movie like four or five times, right? I even watched it twice this week. Once in Italian, once in English, right? And to see if I could pick up on anything else. And I'd always get confused of, okay, so this dude, this professor... Did he influence the cat and the cat picked up on his vibes and his disdain and started killing people? Or did he make them or did the cat? It's supposed to be a little both. It goes, it goes back ways, right? And I'm just like, I don't remember telepathy being part of the Edgar Allan Poe story, but, you right. know, it is what it is. Speaking of telepathy, the number one telepath here on Dylan's Horror Show is Steph. To me, my X-Men. What did you think about this one, my man? <laughs> I'm going to have to... Uh... Side with Brother Fable for uh, for the most part, I thought it was a little boring. You know, it had some some spooky vibes. I I enjoyed some of the the camera shots and the composition, um, specifically when like the old dude when they I, that it's funny you say that about his about his eyes is because when they zoomed into him like a lot of times, my first thought was like, Jesus, he's got some bushy eyebrows, you know. Yeah. So <laughs> they the detailed the eyes eyebrow, definitely man. was shown. <laughs> He looks like this. Yeah. What I was wondering, like, is that his natural eyebrow, or do they have an eyebrow woman on You're standby? About to tweak it. They yeah, had, yeah. I'm pretty sure that's his natural yeah. eyebrow. A lot of the old Italian guys had those kind of eyebrows. Yeah, oh, Fulci wow. was like, that man right to there. <laughs> <laughs> that man right to there. He's got the eyebrows. Bring him in. He's got a wonderful eyebrows. But, yeah, um, for the most part, I just it was... You know, it was cool for what it was, but it, nothing just really resonated with me. Like, I didn't really care about the doctor and his situation and or the professor, whatever. The chick I thought was kind of annoying. Um, yeah, it just it was, you know, it was cool for what it was, but I didn't dig it for the most part. Yeah. You tell me you didn't dig the very intricate scene where the cat steals the key to the airtight room turns off the air conditioner and those people just slowly suffocate to I like death. how he was trying to open the door too <laughs> dude that cat I'm I like how Fulci committed to that one he's like okay how long is it going to take the cat to open this door it took like a minute and a half people complain about the crane shot in Tenebrae like how long is the cat <laughs> trying to open this door man that's a, it's just, I just watched the Spirio again a couple nights ago and it's like the, the scene where the guy is trying to open the door with the latch with the knife and it's going forever. And all they'd have to do is be like, no, <laughs> just put the <laughs> finger out. They're not getting in. And so they spent like three minutes on eye shots. Of... Well shot, though. Well shot. So Seriously. you weren't really feeling it, Steph, is what you're saying. Yeah. I mean, it had its moments, but for the most part, it just didn't gel well t t for me. I got you. I got you. All right. Uh, Scarpad, what'd you think about Poser Fulci's The Black Cat? He was a poser in this one, I think. Uh, this was this was made before Hell of the Living Dead. I think it came after Zombie Two or something. And even his biggest fans don't realize this because it is kind of an offbeat movie for him. Um, yeah, I didn't really care for all that much. The biggest thing I took notes to this. I watched it twice just to determine if I thought it was as bad as it was. <laughs> um, but it wasn't that bad. I will say this thing first. Every Italian movie I've ever seen so far, the fucking music, I don't care if the movie's bad, the fucking theme song to this movie is fucking fire uh, on both ends. It's so good that the movie can't live up to it. And then some of the music in the middle of the movie sounds like reanimated, which is kind of strange. But you know, Real quick, I'll just point out then, so the, the score is done by Pino DiMaggio, right. who did mm. Dress to Kill, which is coming up this mm. Monday for March Madness. Interesting. Movie night, but he also did Two Evil Eyes. So this was the oh, first time up. that he did a Black Cat score. He did another one a few yes. years wow. later. Wow. I, I, I love the score. But the this, uh, yeah, I mean, this the movie starts off, um, 
they they had a, like talking to the dead plot. The old guy was supposed to be talking to the dead that went nowhere. Um, and then he, all of a sudden that hypnotism angle that he came when he was hypnotizing the, the girl that came out of nowhere and went nowhere. So that was the biggest thing I took away. Yeah, from yeah that was like one that, of the dumbest scenes. That not, the not kind of did it too later. It was like, other, other than the symbiotic relationship and the fact that he hates everybody in town, there wasn't really much of a story to this movie. And the right, cat yeah. just killed people for him and they talked back and forth. In Love fact, when you. when you saw when you hear the whispering, it's going. He's in the room. I don't know who's supposed to be doing that. The cat. It, it just no. Been... Those are the those are the ghosts. I think that oh, the ghosts to communicate okay. with right because cat hung him. Yeah, he came back from the dead. The, the best scene in the movie I thought was the scene with the woman burning to death. They did that really well. And that was the best one of the best fire deaths. But, uh, that was terrible. Oh my god! <laughs> I, and then when they discover or he he like. They discover her body, I know, and I but, just remember for, yeah. the professor like, "Let me go check with you." Like, no, motherfucker, get the fuck out of there. You know what's in there? Yeah, you just put her in there. I really like the uh, when the town drunk gets killed by the cat on the catwalk. Oh, yeah. that's meta, man. Oh, yeah, that was that was actually the best shot and most well lit scene in the whole movie with that yeah. chase up the staircase. But then I'm thinking through the movie, like, why is he running from a fucking cat? Dude, because he's drunk as shit. Like, I, that's what I like. This is one of those movies where you really just gotta have fucking goofy fun with it. Because, like, in that scene, like, it can either come across very stiff and boring, or you just go, How ridiculous is it that this guy's like, This fucking cat, like, like right. scared to death, man. That cat was just coming up the stairs. He's like, Oh, fucking like, teleporting a teleporting fucking cat, dude. It's like crazy, man. So it seems like I think this is going to be the vibe that we're getting. I see that uh, we got some people in the chat. Warren Smith said the Beyond is the one that is by far my favorite Fulci film. Like I love mm, the Beyond. Yeah. That's that's my jam. Yeah, Got to watch that one. But I there are any, any other but this one probably good. Yeah. Well, no, it gets cover, way worse. We did cover. <laughs> yeah, this is not the worst Fulci. Uh, no, not even fucking close. No, this movie best. isn't even Relative. like so bad. It's just so boring. He made a lot of movies. It's not yeah, it's like fuck the load. worst thing, but. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's like, a little whatever. dull. It plods along yeah. for an hour yeah. and a half film. It feels like it's right. longer because you you feel like yeah. you're seeing these bumbling idiots going. It's the cat. It's the cat. It's like yes, it's the cat. We all know it's the freaking cat. We saw it from the very beginning. It's the cat. <laughs> yeah. The name would've is been, the black cat. We knew. Yeah, it would have been better <laughs> if it was like the twist was that it was the cat. Like holy crap, it was the cat. Like, but you don't get that. You know what I mean? Except. <laughs> Am I wrong, or wasn't it like kind of the twist that it was the guy controlling the cat? Because er, at the beginning, you guys though. tell me if I'm fucking wrong. I think the guy has telepathic powers. He controlled the cat. He's the one. He's the one that originally right. made the guy crash his car in the right. first scene. Then right. the cat gets out of control. It's like a Frankenstein situation where they have like a symbiotic relationship. He's fucking around with this. He's like a wizard. He's fucking around, mm -hmm. and then it turns on him. No, but he he's said, doing evil he said in the him. movie, he said, I try to control the cat. To, no, he said the cat was just doing what I was manifesting. Like, he was saying what he didn't like. Yeah. Yeah. And the cat would take it out, and then the that's cat the got more powerful. Right, right, right. the cat was controlling him. Yeah, that's the thing that yeah. confuses me sometimes about this movie, is the idea, I think, is that his subconscious, his subconscious hate of the right. people in this community that have isolated him away right mm -hmm. that is leaked out into this cat still doesn't make sense because if the cat is picking up on his vibes and killing people for him why does he the cat hate the fucking dude i don't right. know and then that's it, what i was saying yeah, yeah. up until right. the point where the dude kills the cat and then you understand it right and then the cat right. sets this motherfucker up to take the fall for all of his kills <laughs> right and i like <laughs> yeah. i like that and that's where it starts bearing resemblance to Poe's story is the very end right. it seems like every time she's in the wall yeah every time somebody right. does the black cat the only thing that they the only bit they care about is the person in the wall that's the coolest the part there as well and yeah new york ripper is a nasty little movie in fact here on dhs we've already covered new york ripper and we did the gates of hell trilogy so we did city of the living dead uh house by the cemetery and the great the beyond and uh we definitely need to unpack those movies individually so verno bulgy's black cat what do you think my man uh i the the second time i watched it which i love that not only on this panel did a lot of people watch it twice but when we did tenebrae last week on your channel everybody watched it twice that is like <laughs> it, I watched it, it does a lot about it. <laughs> italian horror movies it's like it's a fucking must because you're like what is going on i liked it the when i watched it today i liked it okay just like everyone was saying it, it was cool 
at moments. Definitely not my favorite Fulci movie. When I watched it the first time, I was watching it in like fucking eight minute increments and like falling asleep. Like, oh, I'll try it again. Yeah. Oh, fuck. It was like, I was like ready to. Yeah. Buy oh, Barry yeah, around 4K bro. and like yeah. put it on a mantle. Dude, and, like, I, <laughs> Barry Brown had my attention more than this movie, even though Barry Brown is yeah. the worst. You know, the worst movie. I could see movie. that because of just the look of it. I mean, it is shot beautifully. Here's here's my yeah. opinion on yeah. Fulci. I knew that it was. <laughs> he doesn't make fucking great. He doesn't make many great movies that I've seen. He makes some of the best set pieces, probably the best set pieces I've ever seen. But this movie, even the best bits, didn't live up to the shit that I've seen in the other movies. The fire scene is the one that's most like, okay, that's crazy. It's so right. over the top. He goes on forever. Like, holy shit. That is kind of like Fulci, the way like I know him for the movies I've seen. But well, it's the only bit we really got that was like that. Did it's you also a very it? tame movie. Yeah, totally. I was gonna yeah. say. I well, did you did you watch the more. special features for this movie? Because no. that woman in the fire scene got injured. I'm not a part, surprised. A part, a part of the ceiling fell on her, and uh, and it didn't look too safe. The house fell apart. <laughs> it was decent though. Like I, about the music, I thought. Tell me if you guys yeah. agree, and it might just be because I watched it on YouTube. I thought the the audio quality was, especially compared to Two Evil Eyes, it was bad. The rough. music was high it was, quality. It, it, it was good it on the was, disc. But it sounded okay. like bad and really high in the mix, and it was super distracting. The, but the music the, was, it was well written. It was good music. Yeah, in my opinion, it was a little glare, like blaring. Like, da, da, da. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, like kind of took over a little. Bit. I thought the themes, the beginning theme and the end theme, was the best. The movie themes, as I said, it sounded a lot like uh, Reanimator, really. Dude, it, okay. Last last thing on the overall thing, I s- watched some special features. On some Argento movie a few weeks ago, and it it made me understand Italian cinema way better. I feel like this isn't just an Argento thing and just a Suspiria thing. This actress or actor was talking about how Argento was telling them, just act like you're confused and you don't know what's going on. And just like, (laughs) that's your thing. You're not really a character. You are the viewer's guide through the movie. They're just kind of like guiding you walking through these scenes and shit. And you watch it, and you're like, oh, okay, that like this woman just seemed confused the whole time. It's like, I wonder if that's kind of the big quote, or uh, not quote, but coaching that the directors do over there. I can see that. That, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, a lot uh, of Italian horror films are known for uh, kind of a disdain for actors, right? Because they work with a lot of like, uh, actors, in, like inter- internationally, <laughs> right? Like a lot of American actors will go to Italy to like film stuff. A lot of other actors from other countries go there. Some of these people are very like method and shit. And apparently yeah. like, I've heard stories about Argento and Fulci that just hate method acting. They're just like, what are you fucking talking about? What's your fucking motivation? You're, you're, yeah. you're just, just you're going to get killed. Like that's like, they're, just, they're just pieces, you know, like, and I think Argento is a little bit more. I like Argento way more than Fulci. Way more. I love Fulci films, but Fulci was more prolific, right? But Argento was like meticulously crafting banger after banger after banger up until about opera, right? And in the early 90s, when the, the kind of a semi death of Italian cinema happened, and then a lot of Argento's movies are like produced in like the states and shit, and they're not as good, you know? So, yeah. it's, well, I mean, was he had did he have like less of a budget or was it just like, yeah, part of oh, yeah, yeah, but well, there's hardly yeah, any budget. You're saying Argento, Argento, you're saying. Like yeah, uh, later. when he got to <clears throat> that's what I heard yeah. is that he had l- way less of a budget and a lot less time. Yes. Like instead uh, of like 60 day, three month shoots, it was like three weeks. In, in Italy, Argento is considered as important as Alfred Hitchcock. But when he comes here, you know, it's like, yeah, you got 14 days and here's two million dollars. Make the fuck wow, money, right? With actors that are going to annoy the shit out of you because they're going to keep asking you what their motivation. <laughs> What's my motivation? Dude, can I? I, I <laughs> just say there. one other thing that I learned in the special features that made me it, it probably shine more of a light on the whole thing than anything else. <clears throat> this dude was talking about that in that era in Italy when people went to the theater. It wasn't like you go and this is in the "Don't Torture a Duckling" uh, special features, Robbie. He's talking like people go to the theater and they are, it's a social gathering. 
Like that's them going out and they're talking through almost the entire movie. And that's why you have Argento like slam on these crazy fucking songs and it gets everyone's attention. And you've got these big set pieces. Oh, and then okay. after the set well, pieces, after the set pieces, everyone goes back to talking. And so then like, you like, um, mentioned like, that because you're at a baseball game, right? And then right, like, you right. hear the crack of the bat and you're like, wait, what happened? Right. Well, Orson Welles. I had five people uh, talking during Scream Six this week. They were just the whole. I was still watching something earlier about Orson Welles. It, 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 what Werner was saying about um, just something jarring popping up to get the audience attention. But Orson Welles did some movie. I can't remember the name of it. But all of a sudden, in the middle of it, there's like this giant bird or cockatoo or some shit that just comes out of nowhere and transitions into another scene. And he's like, he's like, yeah, you know, that was just to get the audience attention if they were getting a little bored. I was like, that's such a such a random bit, <laughs> but it's effective. I'm trying to remember if that was Touch of Evil. Hmm. Dylan, welcome Who's back. That was that? What up, bro? Well, just you sounded better. Verno, yeah, Fable, dude, Link, and Scarpad all thought the movie wasn't that great. <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't said my full thoughts yet. I'll tell you this. It was okay. I'm a big fan of Mark. This is not the best Fulci film. Like, and if somebody said, "Hey, what's a good Fulci film?" I would never recommend *The Black Cat*. I like mm. the movie. I do like this movie, but it is dull. It is boring. It's got a very slow snail pace to it, right? Um, the kills are not that extravagant. The characters, none of them are appealing. I don't care about any of them except for that damn cat. The cat yeah. is awesome, <laughs> and I think that Fulci was just like spending all of his time making sure that the cat was taken care of. Right. The cat needs motivation, though. But the, cat, the cat needed motivation. But, so, you know, you know, Fable, you mentioned that some of the shots weren't that great. Man, the shots of the cat walking with that music. And you're right, Scarpad, that opening theme. The doo-doo-doo. I love that theme, man. Doo-doo-doo. I, I like it. So well, it, it has some well, but... well, well-lit shots. It, uh, it, I like it, the cemetery uh, one with the, fo- the yeah, fog. For the, but, the, you know, those... it, has, it has some bad ed- editing. Some of the shots do look film school film student uh you know project looking they they do (laughs) um but yeah i mean that that staircase scene like i said very well lit yeah Um, yeah yeah so i would say overall it's i'm forgiving of it because i know what fulci is capable of and and i can have some fun with this one but when you're watching this movie alone it's not as fun. This is one you definitely want to watch with somebody where like you can have some fun with it, make fun of it, because it is not necessarily a good movie, but I still enjoy it. And it's definitely not my favorite interpretation of the black cat, even though all of them are very like the only truly accurate one to me is the Stuart Gordon one that he did for Masters of Horror. Um, I think Argento's Black Cat from Two Evil Eyes is better than this one. My favorite yeah. though is still the uh the one with uh, Boris Karloff and Bela Lugosi from the 30s. Mm. I think that movie mm. is absolutely fantastic. Bears even less resemblance to the Poe story than this one does. <laughs> I think it's That's high. what this score reminds me of. It's one of those 30s movies. This score has that harrowing kind of... Yeah, it's interesting. I'm, I'm curious why, yeah. why Fulci didn't use Fabio Frissi bef- again, because Fabio does a lot of Fulci's film scores from this era and they all fucking rock city of the living dead zombie like those are amazing scores and this score is really good but it is more classical it is a little bit more yeah. you know string heavy and less synthy and stuff like that but that may be what he was kind of going for now right. also this movie was made and released in 1981 in italy didn't come out in the states till 1984 was not really a big deal here in the states especially considering like the success of zombie you know at the drive in yeah. Like that so uh, Dylan I'm curious man what do you think about this one overall I'd say man I I liked it more on my first viewing to be honest um, then when I was watching it before the show I, I kind of felt it was dragging a bit you know I feel like uh, the set designs and the music are the two best things going for it besides you know the cat but you know uh, the main guy he's pretty good the crazy guy who's you know that's interesting that, yeah Cat, I think he's good, but yeah, I don't know. It, it didn't really have any good kills in it. I was kind of surprised because I was like, man, I really enjoyed it the first time. But my second watch, I was kind of like, yeah, it's a bit of a bit of a letdown more than what I thought. I still 
think it's a good movie. I still will watch it in the future because it is Fulci, and it's still a good representation of the Black Cat. But uh, we should have had a little bit more gore in it, you know, especially I don't know if Fulci was trying to go a little more serious in this one, thinking like, man, this yeah. will be a little like, you know, it being a Poe story, thinking like, mm. that's know, a, yeah. I guess you know. I'm kind of going like crazy gore for what I'm known for. I'm gonna to try to be go a little more serious with this one. I don't know if that's what he was You're trying, trying to be elevated. I, I, I love the that, idea though. of Fulci being like, "This is my master." Yeah. <laughs> Maybe, man. Maybe. This is what I'm all about. Even though I got 15 gory movies, this is what I'm all about. This is what I've been working towards. <laughs> but uh, the set design is fantastic in this. I, I think the set is like some of the. You know when he's in the cemetery and it's all smoky and everything. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't even know why that guy was trying to do all that stuff. He's filthy rich. Look where he freaking <laughs> lives. I mean, he, he lives in a castle. This guy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, it uh, it definitely could have been a little better. I wish that maybe he had a little bit more gore with the kills. It's a, you know most of the kills are just him kind of getting scratched up and stuff, and then the fire, you know. Uh, what the fire when she pancaked on the ground was the best. You don't really get any kills. Those flappy arms like, were killing really me. Get, like the cat just like knocking shit. She was trying to put herself out. In the fire and then that kills someone. Else. So it's definitely a lot different than your normal Fulci movie movies that you get. But uh, I still enjoy it. I think it's a good watch. I think the music and the atmosphere and set designs are. The, Best parts of it, but I do think the old, fair, guy, yeah. the old guy is really good because he plays just a perfect, crazy, out of out of his fucking mind guy. Like he just looks out of his fucking mind. Yeah. So him to play a guy that's out of his mind, thinking a cat's trying to kill him, is not far fetched because he looks psycho to me. You know, so yeah. I, he's totally believable. And but, you got uh, some of the other performers that we've seen in other Fulci films, like the. Uh, the uh, the police officer is the the boat driver from Zombie. I'm Brian Hall. The, the detective, <laughs> the main dude. With the, the 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 guy who's like the local police officer. Oh, the stash. The, the inspector, yeah, the stash dude. Then the inspector from Scotland Yard is the dude. He's the main dude from Be- the Beyond. Right. Mm. So it's cool to see familiar faces. I guess. Right. Notice yeah. you, you have male actors doing multiple movies with Fulci. I don't think you have many female act- actors <laughs> doing that. I can't remember her name. There's one woman that's in a bunch of Fulci. Oh, is there really? Okay, yeah. I'll shut up. <laughs> Fulci must have had the hots for her, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know which way he swung. I hope it was both. Because he's yeah, got- one of the best uh, best lines in the whole movie when he was like, no, not a cat. You're a cat. <laughs> no shit, man. Because the person just like, what does a cat have to fucking do with anything? <laughs> cares about the fucking cat. Not well, cat. The, the other part yeah. is when the fucking uh, dude takes the hot looking blonde into the boathouse, going, Oh, this is perfect. There's a bed in here, and you go in and see it. It's a fucking army cot. What a romantic guy that <laughs> way. Yeah, there's some, some rapey vibe there, too. Let me just lock this door. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I think that same character was in uh, Scream 6. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's uh, it ain't, a, it's not. Not full cheese masterpiece by any means, but I wouldn't say it's terrible. Or no, anything. it's not terrible. Really no, terrible. yeah, it's weird because I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe I just wasn't as in it today when I was watching it's it. Boring. That's all it's right. boring. It's really boring. Boy, at the first watch, I really and it's the first watch for all of you guys. I'm sure. Yeah, it is. Robbie, I know, has watched it. Vern might have seen it. No, I, I hadn't. <laughs> You said like the, you, the it's funny because when I was watching it, um, Verno said he was like kept falling asleep or like was watching it in like ten minute increments, and yeah, I he he falls asleep though during all his movies. I thought to myself watching this, I was like, man, I should have started watching this but earlier. That was the my problem, He's probably really. up all night with a kid, yeah. so he has an excuse. No, no, yeah. I, I didn't fall asleep when I watched the Spirit. I started that at ten o'clock a couple nights ago, and I was fucking glued to the screen every fucking <laughs> second. So if it's a yeah, don't watch a really good movie, late. then I won't. You know. This is a good afternoon movie. Don't watch it past four. Dude, don't you guys wish that they dropped all? If this was just Lucio Fulci directing 
a movie without all of the supernatural shit the or the extra supernatural shit other than the cat and it was just the cat going around slashing people just would have been a better movie cat yeah. slasher with a bunch of gory kills by Fulci would have been it could have been a five <laughs> like that's what's yeah. disappointing i love how when this cat like scratch. attacks someone they like they go ah and then the cat <laughs> jumps away and then they just stand there <laughs> waiting for it to happen again <laughs> Like that, that fucking dude that gets hit by the car. He just stands there. Like, yeah. And they keep on using this, the same fucking fake cat paw to scratch him with the... Yeah. <laughs> it's on like a ruler and they just go... Yeah. A gray cat paw. The cat was good, though. Fulci got a lot of good shots with the cat. And like yeah. for Starfighter and Robbie mentioned, that intro is just... I just love that opening with the cat just walking around, climbing around the house with that music. It's just, I wish it, I wish it kind of went like for Fulci. You feel like this is going to be the most batshit crazy black cat movie. Yeah, it didn't really happen. And I feel like that's the only thing I could think is like, did he think this was going to be like his masterpiece? So he tried to tame back and be like, I'm going to go serious with this. But I really did enjoy it my first watch. I still think it's a good movie. It's just, it's a little bit more serious and not as, like, fun like most of it. It's a different take from Fulci, which isn't so bad. It's just, I feel like maybe Bruno was going in with different expectations, only seeing, like, Zombie and some of his, like, his mm-hmm. best work. Like, you haven't seen yeah. some of his weaker films. Mm-hmm. So you probably are like, yeah, this is probably the shittiest film that I've seen by Fulci. I would say, I mean, I, I'm a little different than I think you guys with City of the Living Dead and House by the Cemetery. I struggle with those movies to a degree with the stuff in between the the kills, but the kills and the gore scenes are just, there's more of them and they're better, you know? Well, I, I would, get annoyed I by how that that's people. kind of what you go for those movies for. I'm not right. I'm right. not like, a little kid in the house the one, the the one that I like the Bob? best story wise. Was Bob? Bob? Bob. 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 Like, Bob. Bob? It's like a haunted house monster movie. Where, What's the one where the priest hangs himself at the beginning? That's City. Uh, City. Okay. And Rob, see, when we, I think it was me, Strick, and Robbie, we did the Gates of Hell. And we all had our own favorite. Robbie's was from the uh, thumb, the Beyond, or is it from Beyond? The Beyond. From Beyond. And then I I love uh, House by the Cemetery and Brooklyn Lake City. I love all three, but that was my favorite, you know. And I think it just depends on your taste, both right. of you, you know, because all three for that being Gates of Hell, all three are completely different, you know. But like I said, you know. I love me some, what would I say, haunted, it was like a haunted house monster movie from beyond is, you know, that's more of like, kind of, it's more like a zombie film, and then City of the Living Dead, it, it kind of got more of that religion factor in it, with yeah. just mm-hmm. a girl puking her guts up the whole time. And shit. Yeah. And the drill. Yeah, it's got two of the, his most iconic scenes. Yeah. But there is some good shit in From Beyond, too. Don't, don't. The don't Beyond. Be- the Beyond. All <laughs> oh, those good shit from Beyond. Yeah. From Beyond, the Gordon one. Yeah. The okay. Beyond. Yeah, yeah, the Beyond. But uh, the Beyond to me is the best Fulci film. Like I love that movie so much, man. What would you well, say, Suspiria, that one, Suspiria or the Beyond? What? What's better between Suspiria and the Beyond? That's kind of. Yeah, those, are, I feel like those are your two favorite <laughs> value movies of all time. Oh. Uh, there's probably three or four Argento movies above. Yeah, I would say Suspiria yeah. and Tenebrae and Bird with Crystal Plumage and Deep Red are above from the I don't know. The Beyond's really good though. But like Fulci's like mid level and Argento's like top level for me. That's yeah. just me. And then you got like Lamberto, who's like a little bit below Fulci, maybe. But I the name I hear a bunch that I've only seen one of his movies is Sergio Martino. Martino, yeah. I don't know him. Uh, there's a box set on my wish list if anybody wants to Throw sixty bucks my way, I'll get it. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> I want to dive more into his work too. And then, of course, Scarpad's a big fan of the the piece of shit that made Burial Ground. So it's giving you another oh, opportunity boy. to show off that shirt that Thank two of them had to hand fucking Crayola because they they don't even make these. No, I tell you, they sound like hotcakes. Can't even find them. That's right. 
the very hard to get. Scar pet bottom all. I, I, I think though, uh, being in a sense now, you say it's, it's working fine. I think it's my laptop, bro, because I got my girlfriends or the fiancés, like her best friends, over, and she has her MacBook. She had her MacBook with her. I had no issues. I popped it right in. I didn't see the bars at all. But if I, I'm literally looking at my laptop right now, and the bars keep going up and down, up and down, and you're going. So I don't know what the fuck is wrong with the laptop, if anything. All that porn. What that would have, well, like even if you have a slow yeah, laptop, why is the Wi-Fi acting like that? You know, it's very weird. So now I'm probably gonna yeah, the activate all the videos. Well, I think we've we now know it's a hardware issue. So uh, everybody, let's get Dylan up monetized. And if you need to help out, he's got a PayPal address you can send money to and help him get some good equipment, man. Some upgraded uh, stuff. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna. If this is a, I think I'm gonna have to get a MacBook, bro. I think yeah. we just need to get you an iPhone 69, bro, and you'll be fine. Uh, yeah. yeah, give me that futuristic shit. Um, <laughs> but yeah, man. Um. Any anything else anyone wants to say? I think we might have to just go to the rating and what the movie means. Uh, Unless there's uh, something Robbie wants to say, I feel like I didn't hear what any of you guys said, which I'm kind of bummed about. Right. But I think Robbie kind of gave me the gist of it. At all, y'all. I did. Uh, I did like two. You guys scenes. Are on me for picking on the black hat. I did like two uh, favorite scenes. <laughs> I'm just there. kidding. Um, I liked when the cat was opening the door and they showed him like flexing on the door handle. Uh, I thought that was pretty dope. <laughs> like, <laughs> that cat's been making some gains, man. Yeah. <laughs> At first it looked like the cat was doing like some like roaring, like when they show a shadow of him being hung, hanging. Oh, yeah. I thought it was like kind of like him kind of like standing up on his hind legs at first and like kind of like, I don't know, looking like boss. But yeah, then, he was flexing. Then they thing. show another shot, and you can clearly see the rope. The first shot, you don't see the rope at all. You just see it. It looks like he's standing up on his hind legs. I don't know if I was just tripping. You, did you <laughs> see that? Did you notice that, Vern? Mm -mm. I I was confused by the whole cat shadow on the wall hanging bit. Like I didn't know what the fuck was to make of any of that. Yeah, I kind of was confused by that too. But I, I'm thinking like the Argento, the cat. Obviously, he can't die. You know, mm -hmm. but uh, this cat's going around committing murders like no other. You know what I mean? Just I uh, did like that. I don't know. There was a lot of things that I did like about it, but it was just too much. There was too many too elements low. to it. I like that it was like controlling people and that they were the the, yeah. the hypnotizing shit. But it was just unclear well, and too many. The guy things. seemed like he was like like a ghost hunter at first. He was you supposed to be I mean? talking to the dead. They abandoned nah, that. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. He was like a ghost hunter, and then it was just then I was like, "Is he hunting the ghosts of like what he thinks that the cat? You know, like people are, that are getting killed by the cat." Yeah, they dropped the whole plot. Then basically, yeah, they basically just let it go, and then, um, you know, when the blonde chick comes in, and she, the cat just comes out of nowhere and just scratches the fuck out of him, and he's just like, "Yeah, I don't really know why the cat didn't he's attack so them from time to, to time." He hates them, but, but I don't know. But we need the each subconscious other. thing. We need yeah. each other. Yeah, right. I love I love when I love when he bopped the girl over the head with the, I gotta watch the stick. stick. That was funny. She was like, "Bop!" <laughs> I was like, oh, "That was a good like, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> it to me, Starpad. I literally like right after the stream. After I showed it off on the stream, I was like, "You know what? I'm gonna pop this in. It's Fulci. It's gonna. It's ten o'clock at night. Perfect." You know what I mean? That's the perfect yeah. time to put on a Fulci film. It's no, late at night. What is fuck you like? You know what I mean? Like, no, tell me, Colonel. Tell me you you know, you put on zombie at ten o'clock at night. You're glued to the fucking right. Screen. Totally. You know yeah. I mean? Now this yes, this is right. not a night movie. It's a day movie. I, it dude, is. I, I enjoyed like it more today at three. <laughs> I did really enjoy it though. In the when I yeah. first watched it, but then on my second watch, I was like, "What did I really see?" So late? I like, thought for sure you were going to say you fell asleep. It wasn't thrilling. I had fun. Oh, dude, it. I I was I just kind of couldn't. I kind of kept like zoning out of it. I was like, this mm -hmm. really dude, well, this is what I was gonna say, man. While I was watching the movie, and I think it's indicative of even because you guys know I've been watching a lot of Buffy, and that's way newer than this. But even right. with Buffy, like we had longer, better attention spans back then. Yeah, like it's. I feel like people weren't as lost and confused at these movies when they watched them 
when they came out. I don't, I don't sure, fucking I know, do. but I do. Like my biggest thing is if I am fucking actually paying attention, I obviously I enjoy it a shitload more. But it's it's hard to keep your attention, and then with these movies, there'll be one line that if you miss that line, you're fucked and you're confused as hell. So it's, <laughs> that's a big part of these movies too. And it's even more so like that with the Chalos, the, the yeah. Chali. <laughs> that's right. Jolly is the correct. Well, that's why a lot of times, a lot of times I think it's worthwhile to keep the uh, subtitles on. Right. It does help to just, even if you're watching in English. Uh, I, I watch every movie. I, it, I always put subtitles on in all my movies. Yeah. I do too. It's like reading the script. Yeah. Well, I don't know if you guys I notice it, especially with the newer you movies. Can't you can't understand what people are saying. So. They they overdrive the effects in newer movies so much that the, the, the effects will absolutely blow you out of your seat. And then when you when you try to listen to the dialogue, you can hardly hear it. And of course, when you turn up one, the other one gets like blah. So mm. it's just like, you know. I some know are worse about, than others, though. But there's, yeah, there's some of you are just. I think newer movies are worse than the older yeah. movies. The older movies weren't that bad, mm. like this one. Don't condescend to us. Oh, of course, <laughs> I was. I was like, I'm, I was I'm not condescending. I'm just making. A, I'm just <laughs> yes, that. you are. Yeah, I was in the '70s, <laughs> but I did watch this in English. I did not watch the Italian, so it doesn't make much Italian? difference. At all. Yeah, I watched the Italian today actually. So. Oh, you did? Yeah. Is there any difference in it? No, not really. Uh, the the, the is... inspector from Scotland Yard seems a little bit more pervy. That's about it. <laughs> I can see that. That's fine. <laughs> I like it. What? <laughs> I don't even remember the bit. Yeah. I don't well, even... the, the, the guy that rode the bike was no winner either. The, the guy riding the bike around the cop. Oh, the the, the, the guy with the mustache? Is that yeah, he was a strange dude. The like, that's the main cop guy. Don't go talking to the dead. <laughs> they like being left alone. That's what my mom always said. <laughs> I, I he, like when he just pedals away. <laughs> when they do his introduction. Well, yeah, when, when he's leaving cabin. and I'm she's sorry. like, Officer? And he's like 10 feet away and just ignores her. <laughs> yeah. just pretend she didn't hear. He reminds me of the cop in uh, fucking Cabin Fever. You guys like to party? <laughs> party guy. <laughs> Party. No, his introduction is funny. You she's down, wrong. she's in like the tomb area or whatever the fuck that is. She and all mind. she can see is his feet. It's like, well, that's not how fucking vision works. Like, if you can see his <laughs> feet, you can see his fucking face. Like, <laughs> that's not how vision works. You know, here's another thing I want to point out. So we know that Fulci's got this eye thing, right? He's always got these shots in his movies where he focuses in on the eyes, where he's causing torment to the eye the zombie scene in particular is what really stands out um god damn there's a lot of eye shots in this fucking movie like a lot like a i think folks was just like what if i did a whole fucking movies that's just eye shots and they're like well, well you gotta have more than that he's like a cat <laughs> dude there was a whole conversation where it was eye shots i was just like what the hell is this like every time he talked it was like zooming on her eyes and then when she talked it was zooming on her eyes and he talking I'm like, what the hell is this? Why it's, they keep doing it? All, all of his movies are like that. Steph, do you remember oh, a few God. weeks back when I said Fulci jerks off to Zooms? Yes. The, yeah, <laughs> yes. <he does. laughs> yeah, I had noticed that a lot in this movie. Uh, Bro, in this one, yeah, he, had a a he, had he had a movie yeah. of a kung fu movie, like a Shaw Brothers. Well, that's weird, yeah. Yeah. I, Shaw Brothers I, I was going to say Godzilla, they do the same time. thing. This movie had a Zoom out and then a Zoom back in. And I just yeah. was like, that's so fucking awesome. <laughs> yeah, and there's plenty of times where, like, it's for almost no reason. You're like, yeah. it's just no reason at all. Just they felt like doing it. It's like when the it dudes, cool. like, watch the drunk dudes watching behind the fucking tombstones or whatever, and it's just like, like <laughs> it's definitely, it's a 70s thing. Even in Taxi Driver, yeah. Yeah. I, there was a couple no. that were, like, a little, what we would think of as being corny now. Nobody would do that now. Well, another yeah, thing yeah. that was happening, for instance, in the 70s is that films weren't as big, right? Like, like especially in the early 70s. So until something like The Godfather happens, right? And The Godfather kind of lodged a little bit more of interest, but like Paramount was in danger of closing. A lot of studios were in danger of closing because they just weren't making money because when TV first came available to a lot of people, it kind of 
killed cinema just a little bit, right? And back then, people were, were all over the internet being like, it's the death of cinema. It's all woke and shit, right? Mm. So that was happening back then. No, the they internet. never used the word woke back then. No, I'm just. They weren't on the internet either, Scarpad. It's a joke, Scarpad. You get it? Anyway, don't condescend to me. Don't so, condescend to <laughs> so, What the fuck was I saying? Oh, so, I think the evolution of the zoom shot is a budgetary thing because instead of now having to go and reset a mid shot and a wide shot and then a close up, we just do it all at fucking once. Mm. God Dude, damn it, you know? I wrote notes. I wrote notes too. And one of my notes is too many zoom ins and blur ins. <laughs> it stands out. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. Really it really does. Because well, I mean, for no reason, like Bruno said, half the time. Like, for, you know, just... I mean, I guess you guys. There are, are other Dolce movies where there are zooms and shit for no reason, but it still works. You know what I'm saying? Because like, it's interesting. There's one. Yeah, in this movie is boring. Yeah. About <laughs> on PCP, uh, don't torture ducklings. Got some nice use of zoom. It, it, it works there? in like Austin Power movies. That's like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's say and then you see Tarantino do it. Tarantino almost like satirizes it. In Kill Bill. Yeah. There's yeah. one, and it might be don't torture a duckling. He zooms into someone's mouth and out someone else's mouth <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> for, for yeah. no reason at all. It's like, fucking awesome though, man. I, I something like that would be cool. Yeah, that's like yeah. us sitting yeah. around that's going. What I was, I was like in the out. Austin Powers movies where they they hid the guy's wang behind like vases and stuff. He's standing there. <laughs> well, it was a good shot. Random. Yeah, you like hiding. Um, <laughs> yeah. I like to hide those wangs <laughs> behind va- vases. <laughs> How about some melons? I remember that one. Yeah, right. <laughs> the melons. Yes. There's um, a nice set of hooters you got there. And the owls Did come out. Owls or <laughs> Yo, that's the movie that he needs to come out. Like, aren't you surprised it's not? They did that Super yeah. commercial where they had all, or they had them all. Have, yeah. It was fucking Mike Myers doing half of them, but there was Seth Green and everybody was yeah. there. They could totally that's do it. Right. Nice yeah. beaver. I just had it stuffed. It's been 20, 20 years already. Shit. Just call it remember? Dr. Evil. And you know what I mean? Do the spin yeah. out, have him be the lead. Be huge. I'm surprised they didn't do plan. that. Preparation eight. Come to ten. <laughs> I, I can't believe they never did a, a Doctor Evil movie. It's crazy. Right? Right. It would have just been another Austin Powers movie. Though. Yeah. Right. Yeah, real shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> totally. Austin Powers 4 one day. Yeah, better um, hurry up. <laughs> well, he wears makeup. But, yeah. Uh, Right. So you want to do the rating and then, uh, Robbie, would you say there's really a meaning to this movie or should we just do the rating? There's a meaning to every movie and there is some deep subtext in this film. All right, my brother. All right. I figured you would say so. I just was wondering. (laughs) 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 Don't beat him down, man. Nah, you felt good, brother. Um, Scarpad, then kick it off first, my brother. And anyone in the chat, if you were able to watch The Black Cat this week, throw your rating down in the chat below. Uh, I give it a three. And I still kind of enjoyed it, even though it was slow and some of the story didn't make sense. It was still fun to watch, and I love the music, so I'll give it a three. What was it saying? It's it's a boring film, but fun to watch. Your idea of fun. Well, (laughs) it was, I wouldn't say it was ever really truly boring for me. It wasn't extra exciting, but I Mm -hmm. I didn't find it. It was only an hour and a half, so it could only get so boring. You'll understand probably what he means by that. You know, it was no, let me put it this way. It was no burial ground. And that's all I gotta say. It's three <laughs> Well, I didn't say use burial ground as a reference. <laughs> you don't I have to say that. Damn uh, shirt, handmade. Handmade by Michael the, the tip. It was made in a cave. Scraps. I hope it's scraps. <laughs> um, <laughs> scraps a dog. I'll give this a 2.69. Like it was competent enough, but you know, just for me, it was it was very boring. Uh, nothing really resonated with me. It was a struggle to get through. I when you know I was I really did think to myself often while watching this today. I was like, man, I wish I would have started this on like Wednesday or Tuesday and watched it in increments. I'm feeling like y'all are losing some faith in my ability to pick movies to review. Negative. No, no, I, I like I like seeing 
the different eras and different facets. Uh, it's not the movies or... you pick per se, but maybe a few in a row. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would agree with that. Movies. I would agree with that. I think we can all agree that you had been on fire for quite a while, though. We had yeah, you, yeah, we yeah. had a good couple months where it was like, God damn, like we really did a lot of good yeah. movies. So at least they're interesting. Yeah. I appreciate yeah. seeing, you know, even though it's not my cup of tea, I appreciate it. versus Robbie and the Italian. I would never sit here and just, I, you know, I love my horror movies and I can go on and on about the shit in the 80s and mostly the 90s, I'd say. But I'm not going to sit here and act like I'm the king of Italian. I would say Robbie's got me beat on that, no doubt. You see, <laughs> like I haven't seen Respect. Don't Torture a Duckling yet. I've never, I never even heard of this one Gary North mentioned, Lizard and a Woman. Lizard and Woman Skin? Oh, yeah. That's a great, never, that's a great, never that's even great. heard of it. Never even heard of it. That's a good one, too, man. There are right. Those are like before. his Jalo, though. Like, those are Jalo. So that's a little bit different. Like, that's, and that's like 70s. Uh, like see, I'd say Giallo, Fulci I before know. zombie and Fulci post zombie, two different mm. directors almost in a way. And this was before zombie. This was right after. after. Right. Okay. And then see, he, didn't he do Ripper like the same year? I think that's part of it too. I, I feel like he did a couple it. movies in eighty one. I might be wrong, yeah, but Ripper, this, Ripper was, was better than this. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. New York Ripper's eighty two. Yeah, same time. They were throwing those mm-hmm. movies out, man. Did now, New York Ripper is a giallo, you know, but... What's up? Did you say everything you wanted to say, my bad? Oh, no, no, I, I was just going to say, you know, even though it's not my cup of tea, like this this one, you know, I, I don't think it was a terrible movie. Like I said, it was confident enough. Um, I still appreciate seeing it, though. Next Italian know, regardless. Movie, I'll make sure it's a banger. Like yeah, you Consult with me before you Demons, pick another Italian you know. one two. <laughs> Robbie, you can't do Demons 1 and 2 because I'm trying, I want to, I think I'm going to want to do those. Joke's stuff. on you. We already did it, brother. <laughs> uh, well, I think no. that was Verno's first well, Italian horror. I still don't know if these two... I, I I say at one point this gang needs to do Suspiria, or and Zom. yeah, I this think gang so, doing well, Suspiria would be because it's almost like the benchmark. Then they get what we're yeah. hearing, fucking everything, everything else too. Right. I'm glad you all know? of you are saying everything you're saying because I was just going to feed into what I was going to say about this movie. I, I'm giving this movie one slip. Um, it was incredibly boring. It's incredibly uh, you know, meh, blah, whatever. <laughs> Not scary. Cat's not scary. You know, I want a horror movie. This is not scary at all to me. So I got, I got. One, we're, we're gonna have one slip. Crazy banger next and, time. And I'm just gonna say, that. man, it is pretty What's scary, Fable, because speeding no. in a small town like that hey. on a motorcycle is no joke, bro. <laughs> <laughs> hey, like I said, you know, the sticking the factory is scarier than this movie. Hey, if you had, if you had a real <laughs> like, cat coming at your neck like that, that might be pretty Rock. scary. It might be pretty uh, scary. I don't know why so they I'm always use black cats. That why can't they use a white the cat? Bangers and that we're going to do the, the best Italian because you guys are kind of losing me with the stuff that I've been watching. If it, this is like the Italian horror that I got to expect. I, I, I well, think we should go over to Japan because I'm feeling that vibe a little more better in, in, in classic horror. Just wait so, till yeah, the end of it. Well, March Madness, man. You, you should let's, be lucky I don't do some Italian sci-fi movies because most of the sci-fi movies are oh, horrific. Bad. Oh, let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. I want. I want to see. <laughs> no, I, I mean, really bad. I, I think it. that's a great idea. Yeah, the yeah, vampires is good. That's about the only one. one. <laughs> well, two point two point five. Well, right? uh, the only Changed thing, that, only a month I've given. And that's out. a horror yeah, movie. That's April, not really a sci-fi movie. So. Did you just change your score, step? Is that what you just I did? I did. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, made man. some good points. Yeah, uh, so the, I mean, the only thing I've given Ooh. Robbie is April, which I could even change like a movie on there if I wanted, but that's my birthday month, so I had certain things I kind of wanted to do. But I think that's a banger list. I'm not going to mention it, but Robbie, what did you think of April? I thought April's list was mostly good until I actually got a copy of Invisible Maniac in, and now I'm really excited for April. So. <laughs> <laughs> Well, then, April's a great list. So I, I had a feeling you were going to say before you watched it, you'd be like, "Yeah, that might be the only one I'm iffy on." But yeah, honestly, I honestly, I thought that was another scar pad pick, and I was just going to let you know I'm out that yeah. week. <laughs> that, was, that was me. And I've only guys. had that was me, and then two guns. One said, pick in the entire <laughs> show. I only picked one thing. Kingdom of the Spies was my only pick. There's picks. Yeah, no, this. What's the thing? Kingdom of the Spies was my pick. 
Burial Grounds 50-50. Cause it, was a no, it was a recommendation by Scarpad. Yeah. Burial Ground was was a Italian Yeah, yeah but dude, you <laughs> <not able. laughs> trust me, bro. <laughs> me and Dylan watched it one night together that, and realized it. what a horror epic. We both said that night. As soon as he paid no, because listen, off, listen, this listen, has got to be a DHS movie. This is Italian horror, and, yeah. and I grew up with Wes Craven, John Carpenter, um, my man who did the fly, Cronenberg. Not, nothing I've seen is on the level of those guys at all. Hey, right. Sable, I'm not trying to be so, weird. We I'm not trying to be weird stretch here. But if you want to know what good Italian horror films there are, you need to check out PCP Movie Night. <laughs> yeah. I'll say this: fan, I could yeah. totally see Link and Fable, both of you guys, going through and watching a good chunk of the best of the best, and still not necessarily. I can see it, like it, because yeah. it is a taste thing. You have to kind of get yeah. into the charm. But having said that, you guys have watched some of the worst that I've watched. Right. Same, but it is very niche. That's it's more dramatic. Big, that's, it, it that's a big reason why I haven't blown through it because I have to be in a certain mood. Totally, it goes on. It's not like I can sit there all like some people I know watch anime twenty four seven. I can't do that. I could throw. I can binge Dragon Ball Z every now and then, but I can't just sit there watching nothing but anime. I feel like the same with Italian where. I get in the mood where I'm like, I just want to see it. Well, it seems they divide into the giallo ones and the splatter ones. That's kind of like where the the, the <laughs> thing is. So you the balance them, the giallo ones are going to be mostly dramatic, and the splatter will be like barrels. So why are you guys showing us the worst of the worst first? <laughs> no, it just happened that way. Because we expecting us not to like the... No, I told you, I, when I first watched it, I, I, I enjoyed it. My first time I watched it, I would have given it like a 3.69. I mean, it wasn't. Yeah, Italian, I mean, it wasn't the best, but I mean, know, there's not really any Italian movies, on, but yeah. like Suspiria, and maybe like, honestly, there's maybe like a small handful that you'd be like, "That's a fucking five, bro." Right. Yeah, you seriously. Know, well, like, I mean, depends on who you are. Like, there, that's true. That's hey, true. Bernard, don't kind of send us, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say with, with Argento, there's like five of them that certain people will say that's the best. That's their favorite movie. And there's, you know what I mean? You're going to range up and down how much like, you like. But I'd be weirded out if you guys watched Suspiria twice and didn't at least, or if you watch it once, you're going to fully appreciate it, whether or not you like it or not. 100%. Right. 100%. Argento I'm always, I'm always open minded, but, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. giving it a shot and I'm trying to go down that road with you guys because you guys talk about it and I, and I, and I want to be, yeah, what you're talking about. Uh, yeah, yeah. Too. I, I want to feel mean. the love that you feel. But yeah. like, I've seen some Japanese. Like you guys are aware of the old Japanese. Horror, yeah, right? Japanese like, has better stories. The For Japanese me, that stuff is way stories. more creepier than the stuff I'm seeing oh, yeah. from. How old? Right, so, from like how old? Huh? No, he just said Ringu, so he's talking about ninety-five years old, late eighties. Yeah, 80s. There's some right. some sixties and seventies Japanese horror that's pretty scary too. Yeah. I, I would say Italian is like never big on the story. It's always like art. art the artistic I view, the the set design, the music. I, it's, it's, more art driven. it's more art yeah. driven and less story driven. Yeah, like Argento is literally like an artist. Like it, it, you would just think, like, oh, this is like almost like an A twenty four film, just with a bad script. Like it's just beautifully shot. The set designs are gorgeous. The cinematography looks so good, but the story is just. Meh. He's but, got yeah, much more layered themes too, and they're and they're yeah. they're subtle, and yeah. he's. There's a reason why a bunch of people think he's a genius, but you yeah. could totally watch him and be like, "What the fuck are they talking about?" Like, I, I, I get mean, that even too. when I first watched Suspiria, like there was something mesmerizing to me about it, but it's something was still off. And that's the thing is Italian yeah. cinema, you know, it's all dubbed. Every single one of them, they don't record live audio. Uh, mm. It's never caring about the story. It's always caring about the set pieces, the design, the look. It is exactly like what Fable said earlier. If you like kung fu movies, if you like Hong Kong cinema, if you like Shaw Brothers shit. Very similar when, when Bob started getting me, Bullseye Bob started getting me into more Hong Kong stuff. You noticed I was the, like, the similarities, I was like, this is like right? it's Italian we'll horror, <laughs> and Bob loves Italian horror yeah. as well. And it's they're very similar. Yeah. But how awesome are Hong Kong <laughs> movies, right, Fable? No, how no, many I, I ones absolutely are there? Love this. How many shit going on though? Like if no, we showed you the garbage. wrong three, yeah. you would be like, these oh, movies right. suck. <laughs> no, absolutely, you're, you're absolutely right. You're right. You're right. Well, yeah, let's, <laughs> let's, let's watch this period, man. Let's do it. I think that's a great idea. Let's do it. The good ones. 
Yeah. All right. Where were we? What about you, Verno? <laughs> I, God, you guys made me think about it a lot now. Um, <laughs> well, okay. Oh, yeah. I'm just gonna... I have to get that off my chest. That was on my chest a little bit. I, I was ready to be the negative Nancy. I just want to say. I was ready to come on and be fucking dickhead <laughs> Daryl. Like I, I was, I was seriously gonna give this thing like a fucking point five the first watch through. Like I thought it was really bad. Everything that you said. And then it's just, I don't know, that's just how the fuck I am, I guess. I had a very different experience today. Like, I would say I gave it, like, a, a half a you dig, or half a slip, the first viewing, and a three this time. So I'll give it, I'll give it a fucking, I'll give it a 2.2569, which I was going to give it a 2.69, but you guys have made some good points. No, it I feel like I gave it too high. But I'm kind of initiating <laughs> I've I've watched like this is like the sixth Italian horror movie I've watched this week and it's like you I don't know there's something about them that I there's just a keep watching. There's a but vibe. but honestly there's a, a part of it is to be 100 percent honest with you is like I know like, yeah, if I just keep di- keep digging deeper I'll enjoy them even more like I, that's how I am about the shit like I'll watch it till I love it <laughs> like that's what I did with Justice <laughs> League I'll do it with this too. <laughs> On the movie or the cartoon? The movie. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. With the Joss Whedon one, right? The 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 fucking first Batman vs Superman is what I really meant to say. Ooh. I love the shit out of that movie now, but I didn't oh. the first ten times. It's the ultimate, cut. I never the ultimate it. edition, man. It's the ultimate edition where it slaps, man. Right, but and, then Lois has a story, and it's actually a Superman movie. What the fuck? Can you believe it? But that that is what it is. Yeah, you have terrible. to just like I do. I enjoy the visuals <laughs> way more. I listen to a podcast that I've mentioned before, and I can just tell from listening to it like these two dudes are just not as individuals. They're never impressed by that. Like there's right. certain things like you never even mention that scene. Like it looks so fucking cool. And like to me, like that's why. And I feel like we're all comic book fans, so we're all kind of similar in that yeah, way. We're geared that way. Yeah. That's what. If you're really big into like fucking nerdy stuff, you're probably big in a visually stimulated person. I don't Absolutely. know, man. I know plenty of comic book fans where I talk about amazing artwork, and they're like, "Meh," and I'm like, <laughs> "Get the fuck out of here! <laughs> the fuck out of here!" Hmm piece of shit. subjective i think mike hawthorne is the greatest comic book artist of the day fuck you get out of here uh, no offense yeah, to mike yeah i agree with that yeah, i hear he's yeah. a good guy so just don't anyway all right um <laughs> i see everybody like to skip the theme of the movie and that's oh fine. oh can i just say yeah just the theme oh i guess i already said it earlier but that that is the way i looked at it it's a frankenstein movie it's you you mm-hmm. mess with powers beyond your own and to come back to bit you in the ass so I'm curious what else. Yeah. That's true. And okay. Peter, yeah, Peter likes yeah. this movie, I'm sure. You know, don't. No don't animals do were cats. killed. That's right. <laughs> cats, you know? Animal cruelty, right? Animal well, he, did, right. he did hang it. That He's animal. Not... That, that that cat had agency in this movie. Let's just say that. Okay, okay. let's get that out of the way. All right. For me, <laughs> even shit movies, I can peek. I can try to pick a good theme out of it. I think this movie's about the 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 deadly power of the subconscious. That's what it's about. This dude is saying, so this dude lives in isolation. There's little tiny bits in there. For instance, the mother of the girl who goes and dies in the room because there's no AC. How fucking stupid is that? I know I mentioned that in the beginning, but that's the stupidest. The cat took the fucking key, cut off the AC, and they die. Like I, I, thought, I thought there was like... Um... Some kind of something coming in, like has those fumes. He cut the no, line. they were, they were saying it was an airtight fucking place or whatever. But then they were like, the only way to get out is this little place where only a cat could fit. I'm like, if there's a way out, well, there's you ventilation. Know, do you do you froth at the mouth when you don't have oxygen? I don't. Understand. I don't know. That was a weird thing. I know but, that was a weird thing <laughs> too. Yeah. The mother of her, the one who burns up. They allude to her having a relationship with this professor Miles, yeah, yeah. right? They allude to that something mm-hmm. happened. He's been ostracized from this community. Yeah. He is resentful as fuck, right? And even though he's not consciously putting that resentment out into the community and acting it on it, there. it, it's leaking into his subconscious. And anything in our subconscious starts programming into our actions. Manifesting. The cat represents his subconscious actually acting out how he actually feels because he's not dealing with his isolation or how it feels or his resentfulness. He's not dealing with that. So it goes out of control, starts affecting and harming other people and then ultimately harming him. You could see it as any kind of a, yeah. any kind of subconscious complex, like a addiction. Let's, let's just use like alcohol addiction, right? Right. 
Like it hurts the people around you first, then it then it consumes you. And then you are the one like that's I love this fucking movie because the black cat fucking frames this fucker. All right, like, like he, frames, he sets him up. And I kind of almost like that because I do think that's what's going on. Is that what Fulci's thinking? I don't know. I think Fulci's just like cat kills people, lots of us. But that's right. there. That, that's in the script. <laughs> that's in the story. Is the cat represents the subconscious, the deadly power of it, and we have to manage our subconscious. We got to put good things in there because that's where manifestation can can kind of creep out of. Right. That being said, definitely not Fulci's worst. Definitely not his best. It's the middle of the road for me. I give always an extra half of a point or a slip or a you dig or a backlog just because it's Italian. That's why Burial Ground got the gracious 0.5 it got for me or whatever the fuck it was. <laughs> I actually think I gave it a two. But uh, I would give this one a three. Three. And that is, I, I know, being very, very generous. <laughs> Y'all are more right. <gasps> But I like Fulci. No, it's all suggestive. It's all I'll suggestive. Give it a three, movie. It's got some good music. It's got a decent enough theme. The cat stuff is amazing. That's hard to work with animals, especially fucking cats. The most true statement in this fucking movie is when the guy goes, cats never do what you tell them to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no shit, brother. Cats. That's what they do, and that's why I love them. Cats stand on their own, and I love a movie that's bold and daring enough to let a cat be the main fucking character. So three <laughs> clips. <laughs> From Rockin' Robbie! Yeah. You with us, Dylan? That's the <sighs> <Yeah>. In spirit. <laughs> Dylan, so you got me thinking with, your, with what you just said. Maybe the, the dude wasn't hearing ghosts. He was telepathic. Yeah. And, he is telepathic. He, he is telepathic. tapped into the yeah. cat's mind. It is a different sort of mind, right? It's not it is a what human happened. mind. Yeah, that's what we cat, said. The, the thoughts are more instinctual. Like, yeah. Yeah. Right. So it messed I, him up. Hey, Fable, did you sleep through the whole thing? Because we all been saying that for the last hour. I no, still no, don't no, no. Still no, 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 no. <laughs> There's a lot of kind of sending going on here tonight, God damn yeah, it. For real, and I will not stand it. for it. <laughs> Ooh, we got to get that shirt going. Don't condescend to me, Scar. Don't to me. I want to wear that. I want to wear that. It's like, I, that's what I'm proudly. I'll proudly wear that. I got Night of the Demons on tonight. Anybody got a horror shirt? I see we got. I got a wa- um, Walmart Halloween shirt, baby. You, you wearing a friend shirt, Fable? Yes. Yeah. Like, right. I'll be there for this shit, you. This shit was scarier than this movie. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing, man. Rules, man. Don't go, and I tell people this about horror films in general. I definitely will say this about Italian horror films. Don't go into it expecting to get scared. Don't expect uh, it to be I like. Not to, bro. You said horror movies. These or at movies. least be entertained. Yeah, you said horror movies, bro. No, atmosphere is different, though. Right, creepy True. is different. This movie's not creepy. It doesn't have that creepy atmosphere all the way through. The it Beyond is creepy. the creepiest Fulci film to me. But I'd recommend anybody watch Zombie yeah. if you want to see Shark versus Zombie because that's what mm-hmm. happened. Literally. Did you, did you two do your rating? Yeah, three for me and uh, two point five sixty nine from Verno. I believe. Two point two five six nine. Two point five. <laughs> Just to get complicated. So I'd give it. I'd give it a three. I gotta give it a rewatch. I- Maybe it would go down to maybe where Verno's at, but for, I still am holding on to. I did really enjoy it on my first watch. Um, you know, I, it's definitely one I'll give it a, a, another couple watches. You know, I own it. I'm glad to proudly own it in the full T collection. You know, um, and this is, I mean, he's another one of those guys, and I, I know Robbie agrees where no matter what, I want to own his entire catalog. You know what I mean? And it's like, I will guarantee that I'll watch his movies more than once in my life. You know what I mean? Like, you might go down a full chi rabbit hole and you're like, I'm going to watch them all. Like, even if I didn't, even if I thought Black Cat was a one like Fable. Yeah. That's just the type of guy I am where I can still see the shittiness or the greatness in shittier movies, you know? And maybe that's why. You got a guy, you got a guy that you follow. You would do that for because I, I like I do that for really Scott right like really Scott made right, Legend right. and Legend isn't really that great but and he like, made Body of Lies bro whoa, whoa. Like, that movie you know? Legend is Legend is great Legend so I, lo- is great. I love it I love it this is what I was gonna to say. say 
<laughs> Legend is great. Legend is really great. Legend, there's a lot of great. The one with Tom Cruise. There's a lot of yeah, great Ridley yeah, Scott. Yeah. Movies. Oh, yeah. Yeah, those terrible you know? But movies. he made Body of Lies, right? right. He made a lot of movies that aren't necessarily good. He made the Robin Hood movie, right, with yeah. Russell Crowe. Right. Yeah, the Body of oh, Lies yeah. is like the Leo DiCaprio yeah. one. Like, and I, I uh, except, uh, Oscar know, Isaac was in that. Oh, I gotta rewatch it then. Oh. Actually, the very beginning, he gets taken out. I see. That's one of my favorite directors. Saying, too. Yeah, yeah Tw- uh, Black Hawk Down, bro. Like Black Hawk yeah. Down's amazing. Like fucking like legend, Alien. Gladiator. Yeah, Gladiator. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking uh, even did Black do- Rain. Black Rain, the Michael Douglas film is fucking. Mm-hmm. Thelma and Louise, GI Jane. Right. Those are. Did he do um things. Matchstick Men? He did Matchstick yeah. Men. Yeah, I was and watching Rock that the other night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. dude, good stuff. So we, well, that's uh, what I'm saying. Like, I understand what you're saying about watching some guys. Uh, to certain directed oh, yeah. movies, no matter how right. yeah. garbage they yeah. may be, because I'm like that with Scott. Yeah. Scott has I made mean, some trash, but, but he's made some hot shit too. But I, oh, I'm yeah. more I'm of a sure. carpenter guy than I am like Lu- Lucio, to be honest. Like I still I appreciate and I love. He's one but of my. But even Carpenter made Ghost of Mars. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. And I, <laughs> and I, and I actually do enjoy. That was horrible. I enjoyed Ghost of Mars. I went back and watched. It was it horrible. horrible. But yeah, that was I good. the Blu-ray for five bucks like two years ago, and I remember I watched. I was there like, there you go. It's not that bad, like, because everyone acts like it's garbage. No, but it's not compared bad. to like the thing, yes, it's yeah. garbage, but it's not a bad film. Even Wes Craven made Vampire in Brooklyn. I was gonna say that. I'd say mm. out, of all, out of all the old school directors, man, I'd say Toby Hooper has one of the weaker catalogs because oh, yeah. he has I like Texas that. Chainsaw yeah. one and two. Then he has he has a he has quite a few stinkers, and I don't care what anyone says. Yeah, he huge has cocaine a huge stinkers. Too. He's he's major than some of the, but he also has life force. Yeah, the, the oh, masterpiece wow. of which is fun. Like Mars. He had a lot. Of, like, from Mars. Like, had a lot of, like they gave him a lot of bullshit at Canon, which I love. Like Invaders from Mars, I fucking love. I love all those guys, man. I love all the masters of horror. I love all it's, three it's, of Hooper's Canon it, films, by the way. All three of those, I think, are some of his best films. Well, I, I, he, he's got Canon films too, isn't it? Yeah, it's life that was Toby force, Hooper. Life Force, Texas Chainsaw Two. And uh, invaders, invaders from, Mars. from Mars, which I and I love all three of them as well. He's got a lot of stinkers in the I peak of his career lot. for me. You know what I mean? Like a lot mm-hmm. of people, like Carpenter did a bunch of good movies and then he fell off. Fell off, right? And a lot, you know what I mean? He's got like he's just super spotty. I think it's almost like that Whoa. Tarantino logic is true. Where Tarantino's like, I only want to do ten movies because trust me, I know cinema and no director makes anything better than they do in their first ten movies. Yeah. Well, yeah. Prince of Darkness. There might be, there might be something came- to that. Prince of Darkness only came because of what was going on in Italy with Argento and Fulci. He was like, holy shit, let's fucking go. And that's the other thing. The influence that Italian horror has on American horror is it cannot be it cannot be understated. It is it is not just Eli Roth. It is not just James Wall. But it's same thing with J horror. Yeah. And now it's K horror, right? Korean horror. Yep. Yep. Right? Yep. Which that's very it's very cool that we're kind of like because we kind of grew up I'd say at least I did where J horror because it was obviously Italian then J horror and now it's Korean so it's cool to kind of be in the middle of that yeah um, it really is to see to yeah. see us kind of see and what's crazy is there's there's things that are creepy to you know Japanese cinema that's not like they have this thing about hair right yeah like hair and and young pale yeah. faces and shit and like. We're doing a lot of Italian for March Madness. And we're doing a lot of Giallo and Giallo inspired stuff. But we're ending it with some really gnarly Japanese horror oh, to yeah. lead into the promise oh. that we're doing more. Because last year for a horror fest, we did audition. We get Itchy the Killer at the end of the, the March Madness. And we got the Juan coming up in uh, Horror Fest for this yeah. year. So Hell yeah. there's some really great Japanese stuff well, out there and more than like. And I haven't dived into the the Japanese stuff as much as I have Italian, yeah, and Spanish um, horror, right? Like pieces, yeah, Good yeah, movie. yep. So it looks like Gary gave it a three as well, and Two Gun gave it a two point sixty nine, and Bobby D gave it a three. So me and Robbie hit it with threes. Bruno gave it a two point five sixty nine. Fable gave 2. it two point two five sixty nine. Two point two five sixty nine. Okay, I'm sorry. No, Fable no. gave it a one. Steph gave it a two point sixty nine. Five. I he retroactively it down, changed bro. it. Yeah. Okay. And if, if there was one more sex scene, 
three. Yeah. Yeah. That sixty nine would have stuck, baby. I was I was definitely expecting more of that, more more weird stretch sex scenes, and, and more gore. I think he was like New York Rippers next, so we got to tone down the sex in this one. (laughs) Yeah, we got a lot of toe fucking in this one. Yeah, (laughs) no toe blasting in this. Toe blasting. I'll I'll make sure I hit us with a banger next Italian film. Because honestly, when I watched this, I thought it was a really cool, like, mystery, you know, like a little something different. It's not your usual Italian horror film, but I thought it had a little more gore than what I remembered. I'll tell you what, Dylan, for Horror Fest, we're doing two Italian films for PCP. We're doing Opera by Argento. Which I fucking love. And we're doing the Argento cut, finally. Right. Which I'm Donald jealous of. But, you I'm know, curious about that anything, one. I, like I usually yeah. wait a little bit. So at least like, because honest, just because you do it doesn't mean I'm never going to do it. You know what I mean? Just because you have a, a little bit of a different crew on yours. So we have, we'll have different people saying shit. So if you do something, I... I'll still do it. I want everybody. You should to because, them. like, we did Suspiria last year. Finally on PCP Movie Night, but yeah, Fable yeah. and Steph and Scarpad weren't there. Right. I wasn't there either. Yeah, yeah. There's There's you weren't there. There's <laughs> even a few that me and you I did like, was the the that we could do with the crew, like Dad and Bob. Like, 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 <laughs> like, <laughs> like, earlier, we did the Gates of Hell trilogy. Each yeah. one of those can be done individually as well. Exactly. Right. exactly. Well, it's the same thing with the all the franchises you've done. We could do every Friday the Thirteenth movie, every oh, Halloween. Yeah. Every- I, I, I'm just gonna I say mean, this. I want to do. I want to do. And I wouldn't. I wouldn't mind doing one of them at a time. That's, that's what I'm saying. saying. That's what I mean. Like, let's do one Can I tell you this? Two, I, I totally. Later, that's what I mean. If you guys don't want to do it here you know? on DHS, we'll do it on PCP uh-huh. EMN. But like, I'm down for a Friday fucking show every Friday the Thirteenth that happens naturally, and wow. just mm. oh, totally do. That'd be that would be fun. That'd be fun. Um, so yeah, I'd say with the scores you guys gave, I'd say we got an average score of probably 2.369. I'd say that one yeah. brought us down. Yeah. That one brought us down, and we would have been at about 2.5. I think it's actually, but I'm never gonna watch Bruno, it. Bruno's again. gonna come back, and I'm gonna That's be right on, on the fucking money, baby. I'm telling you, I was trying to be real, <laughs> I was trying to be real on the money with that one. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd have just been fucking a game two point five six and nine. But uh, as always, you know that wraps up the review for today. But this upcoming Monday, Scarpad has um, Westworld on his channel at seven forty five p.m. Eastern, and then right after on Rock and Robbie's Pop Culture Philosophers, he's got. Dressed. Um, there's West the West. Let me linger on the Westworld mm-hmm. first because then I, I was trying to. Do the math, and then I was like, "Oh shit, he's talking about next shows." Scarpad's yeah. got a great lineup, <laughs> too, man. Yeah, that's it, a good lineup. Yeah. Spotify lineup is crazy. Yeah, I love. Yeah, I can't. I can't wait yeah. for the week after. I love this movie because you do. It's Michael Crichton. Yeah, we covered this on PCP yeah. Movie Night. I didn't know Crichton. Michael Crichton did this. Yeah, yeah. 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 What is it? It doesn't have the title on it. What is it? Westworld. Westworld. I'm excited for it now. I love Michael Crichton. I was just thumbnail outside of not having the title of the movie though. It's a nice thumbnail. Yeah. Yeah, you might want to fix it. It's, it's in the banner. It's in the banner. He's doing two Michael Crichtons because Jurassic Park is Michael Crichton, too. Dude, you, anyone well, there's, well Michael that Crichton was creature, uh, that creature film about the shark monster. It was like a TV movie. I used to love that when I was younger. So Michael Crichton actually directed this one. Now, there's every wow. book that Michael Crichton did pretty much got adapted into a movie. Yeah, Sphere, yeah. Andromeda Strain, uh, Congo, Rising yeah, Sun, really, Disclosure. Love. I'm a yeah. big Crichton fan. He's one of my favorite. Yeah, me too. I, I love, love, love Congo, man. Love it. Amy, good gorilla. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, but the March Madness continues after Scarpad Sci-Fi Sojourns gets done talking about Westworld. The March Madness continues with the Giallo influenced, regardless of what Brian De Palma fuckhead wants to tell you. Dress yeah. to kill, baby. Dress to kill. That's Dude, I got the 4K from Kino. It's gorgeous. Yeah, we're this, gonna have, that have a lot of um, on that one, right? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Well, hey, there yeah, you go. Yeah, There's yeah. a little. Awesome. Even it's though good. that is American made, that is still yeah. fully. It, it felt Italian, real it, shit. It is a hundred percent. You already read it? Then? I mean, watched it then, stuff. Yeah. 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 It's so, so, have you seen it before? before? I should. No, 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 no. I watched it earlier this week. Nice. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, and then they kick next Saturday off. 
we got a recommendation from Two Gun Pedro. We have a new movie that none of us have seen. I'm pretty damn sure. Oh, nice. A movie called Triangle. Okay. Which he tells me, even if we don't like it, he knows it's going to be a good, a damn good discussion. So I'm excited right. to check it out. To, to be honest, okay. I did throw it on and I watched some of it when he first sent me the re- he sent me a Region uh, B Blu-ray for it, and um, it definitely is one I think we'll have a good discussion on because I think that it's it can go a lot of different mm-hmm. ways. So you know what year this is, brother? I'm trying to search. It's for 2009 it. or something like that. Let me see. I got the Blu-ray. It's it. That's okay. the one thing we're gonna have to figure out how we how we watch it. You can watch it for free on YouTube. On those, you can watch oh, it nice. free. Yeah, it's and it's on, on it's, it's it's on Freebie and and Amazon yeah, yeah, Freebie. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's 2009. It's 2009. Because yeah, uh, obviously, if he had to get me a Region B Blu-ray, I'm guessing it's out of print in the states. So, but uh, definitely excited to talk about this one. Um, yeah, so that continues March Madness. And uh, let's get into show and tell, my brothers. Who wants to kick it off for us? Oh, by the way, and we're uh, at so many yeah, yeah. channels somewhere. We'll, we'll be yeah, talking about next Thursday. Thursday I'm going to try to do that. I was going to say yeah. maybe Friday, but um, we'll, have to, we'll have to see because then I'd have to skip the zone show. I think we should do it Thursday is what I think. I know what you think, brother. So, yeah, I, mean, I can do a Friday, Friday show, but I can do a Thursday Friday, show. I know you're busy Friday. So, yeah, I'm gonna I'm try. I'm gonna try for like maybe a seven thirty on Thursday to do Scream Six. I'm there, bro. Hell yeah! Two guns uh, on Shutter. So there you go. Oh cool. Oh yeah, I think it did get added to Shutter. That's what's fun. Yeah, yeah. You search a movie, yeah, and if it's on Shutter. Me. He he does, it's not in the list. Movie. Movie. They never yeah. tell you for some yeah. reason. Isn't that fucked up? Yeah. Why, what's yeah. up with all the shutter hate? Right. <laughs> what do you mean shutter hate? It, like if you search a movie, there's a list right here of like 20 places that you can stream this. Shutter is not on that list and they yeah. never will be for whatever reason. Oh, yeah, I noticed that. They're very, I mean, well, they're very it's owned by AMC. That's why. I think, I don't know. I don't know. I think maybe Shutter doesn't pay the money for that. Usually it would at least tell I, I, I you much. Amazon Prime with a premium subscription because you can get Shutter yes, through Amazon. Yeah. Prime. Yeah. Oh, through Amazon, you should be able to see you'll see the AMC plus. It's free on Amazon. Okay. Mm, cool. But it's with commercials on Amazon. Okay. Oh, yeah. It's free fucking everywhere. Well then watch it's it's with yeah. It's Most everywhere. of us have Shutter here. And um and me and Dylan got the Blu-ray. Thank you, Two Gun. Yeah. Oh, Thank you, Two Gun. I wish I wish I would have told Scarpet because he could have probably picked up the Blu-ray himself. So probably, I think I'm pretty sure Two Gun got it fairly cheap. I don't want to spect- spectate, but um, who wants to kick off show and tell for us? I think actually I. Okay, we want to. Yeah, I, I only got three I'll things. Go, really. um, <laughs> go ahead, kick us off. All right, so. First up, just started I'll with some comics. For you. Um, picked up those cool Alex Ross villain variants that came out. Oh, nice. Bro. I ordered those. Check, check. Let me interrupt you real quick to tell you something. So you got yeah. the Super Scroll one right there, right? right? So Strickland, Jay Strick, is helping me do the pulls this week. And he sees this mm-hmm. cover. And I'm like, that's a Fantastic Four book. He goes, why did they put Green Goblin on Fantastic Four? <laughs> immediately, <laughs> Goblin, immediately goes, oh, that's embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, that's not Green Goblin. Yeah, so Green Goblin, Ultron, nice. so, uh, Mephisto. He finally he showed up in Scarlet Witch, yeah, bro. Yeah. He did everything in MCU. <laughs> <Yeah. this guy. laughs> um, Black Cat, Black who Cat. I don't know why they made her a villain, but I get it. Classic Black Cat, I guess. That's interesting. And, um, yeah, Dark Phoenix. Man. Fucking I gorgeous. like that one. That's fine. Yeah, beautiful books, man. Yeah, it's a great, books. great covers, man. Um, finally got in my Metroid Prime remastered for the Switch physical copy. Nice. Uh, great remastered version of Metroid. Um, this thing is going for about 120 bucks right now on eBay because mm-hmm. oh, wow. underprinted these things. Hmm. So I'm glad to have my copy. Ordered it from Play Asia, which is a place I recommend for any gamers. If you can't find a game, check Play Asia. Nice. Um, so yeah, got that. And Robbie, this was for you. You probably really like this one. Got this last week actually, but it finally came in. This is my first Commander class. No, my second Commander class Transformers. This is a big boy right here. 
It's Skyler. Oh, Bro! No. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you'd go crazy. With One people. came in used, man, like loose. And I was like, oh my God, how much? And he was like, this much. And I was like, we got at the same time as when we got the Ramjet and the Dirge in finally. Uh, and I was just like, Stop, I'm going to have to pass, man. Well, they, 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 they put them back up on Entertainment Earth for a, a little while. Um, oh, I don't know shit. if they still got copies, but they're about 90 bucks. It's not bad. It's not terrible. But this, you know, it's big. It's worth it. Man. Yeah, I want that so bad. The original oh, is yeah, dope yeah. as fuck, too, and that's a good representation of it. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, that's my show and tell, man. Nice. Cool. Triple fucking changers, yeah, I'm assholes. <laughs> I'm going to go real quick because I actually have a bunch to show because uh, Vern had actually sent some stuff. For the giveaway that we got going at the end of March Madness on uh, for the American Cycle Review. So we'll start off, he sent. So oh, if nice. get burned, so if whoever ends up winning this, shout out Burn for this. He is super kind to send even one thing, let alone a whole big ass box. So whoever, get, whoever wins should get pissed at Verno for sending the Nightmare on Elm Street fucking That's, remake. Hey, but there's two, two out of two out of right, three. Right, exactly. Yeah, Freddy vs. Jason. Come on. Man. Two out of three is not bad. There's a, I love the killer cut and Freddy vs. Jason. Those, so those are good. And it's pretty cool that it's not, they're all actually uh, single. Oh, you know, they so add nice. three on one disc sometimes. And then I was like, boss, we get all these extra discs that got sent back to us from Best Buy. What do we do with them? <laughs> Package them together. And uh, I'm hoping some of you guys can tell me if these are any good. If anybody's read this, I, 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 I read. Oh, like, I, I like text. Yeah. I read the. Uh, I don't know if it was written by anyone different, but Tim Seeley and uh, like Emily Stone or something. Yeah, it's Tim Seeley, and he does a lot of the artwork too. Okay, I, know, I, I might, I might try to read the read a, read some of this before I send them out since we got the Didn't it, um weeks for the giveaway because I know I, I've read like a couple one shots in there. They're always pretty fun, you know. They're bloody good artwork. Um, I think um Stefano Casale, a little bit of some beautiful, there. beautiful women in it. Hey, and I see working at the post office showed you how to package something, brother. Oh, that's that's <laughs> selling Funko Pops and Hot Toys, baby. Oh, that's which is me too. me too. I know that, uh, dude. This is a good one too for anyone who gets this because this just got Jesus. options on uh, Netflix. I want to say it's got some. Oh, movies. Amazon. Nice. Oh, Amazon. Yeah, Amazon. Yeah, which got an animated series. Got out. Animated. Yeah. I wish it was live action. Yeah, yeah, well, live action. But if they do the animated style with that, like in the style yeah. of Jacques' art, that's going to be yeah. awesome. Yeah, that would be trippy. Dude, I, it's a great. The only one I've read the entire series. I got to get that one shot. The Halloween issue. Yeah, and then uh, dude, and this Scott is- Snyder's been telling us more witches for. He's been telling. Oh, us nice. That. I definitely am probably gonna binge this before I send it out because I I don't think I've ever, I read the sequel to this, but never this. This is a classic though. Some good horror reading right there. Art what was the sequel like yeah. Dark Days or some shit like that? Yeah, the yeah. Sequel. Dark okay. Days. Yeah, that's the one I got. And then um, this was another fantastic Jeff Lemire run. Oh, nice. Yeah. The whole Andrea Sorrentino. I know the third. I know the first. With the first ones in there, but dude. Oh, like, with some OG. That's me. Yeah, I just I'm jealous. Jealous. I'm jealous, man. I'm jealous. I'm jealous. I almost had to be like, nope, that's not there. That's not there. Because I love me some twisty man. This sucker looks good, bro. Burn, bro. You, they should be signing you. They should. Some, someone should be signing you to do some horror. We need some Verno covers. Yeah, man. I'm gonna, yeah, send yeah. Some yeah, blanks. I'm gonna send you some blanks, Verno. <laughs> so yeah. You, you know, Dynamite you. just sent me some blanks to do sketches on, so that we could sell them on my uh, pop culture shop that we do over there. And uh, I'm just gonna send those to you, Verno. So just, oh, and, just do uh, some fun uh, stuff. I'll pretend that it's me. You I'll stand leave. A book okay? stickers yeah. too, I believe. Right. Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah, I like that slip. Oh. Sticker yeah. slip. Yeah. Why why don't you send those uh that that uh Nightmare on Elm Street magazine you got from Marvel back in the day and, and just send that my way, Verna, if you don't mind. Right, dude. Oh, cool. I forgot I actually will show that. No, he sent that to me. I just didn't show it because I'm keeping it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> just kidding. Now you're playing with power. <laughs> well yeah, thanks. Shout out, Vernon. Thank you, brother. Um you bet, dude. I know people, whoever wins that giveaway will be pretty happy because I ha- I got like some digital codes and stuff, but that's going to add a nice little uh, 
little ump to the package for sure. I'm sending you some stuff too, uh, man. So don't worry about it. Thank you, brother. Um, so yeah, when we get that, thanks for reminding good. me that the uh, giveaway is in two weeks, though. I needed to, <laughs> I needed to know that. <laughs> no, bro, I literally was done. Two gun, because I keep forgetting to do it. Like I hit one k a while ago. Like honestly, bro, if you, I'm not gonna send. Like whoever wins it, it might take me a couple weeks to send it out. So you don't have to rush that quick. If it takes you a couple weeks, it's no biggie. I'll, cause I'm a little slow with work and everything. It might. I'm just gonna be honest, bro. If, if anybody you understands, you send it out so you don't gotta like pedal to the metal. If anybody understands shipping shit out too slowly, that's me, man. I'm yeah, so, <laughs> you know, it's really like once I get like, cause if I I try to stack up packages, like sometimes I have to return shit at Amazon, and I kind of pile them up, and then I'm like, I'm gonna just do this once I got like ten of them to return. Which you know, if anyone knows, Verno does. Amazon be fucking shit up when they send it. So I be having a lot of shit to return. Um, but dude, speaking of Amazon, saw this for five bucks and I own Army of Darkness on Steelbook. So I had to pick up Evil Dead. Nice. Uh, it was literally five bucks and I was like, I think I'm going to just put, it came in, the, I got that big book. So I was like, I'll probably just take the 4K and put it in this. But this is the Anchor Bay really, though. It's still a good cop, still a good Blu-ray copy, but the original artwork, it's uh, it's got some cool. That shit was on Amazon for five bucks, and you didn't let me know. Dude, it sold out <laughs> so quick. I thought I put it in the chat. Oh, it sold man. out! I can't keep up with y'all's yeah. goddamn it's, chat, man. Y'all like. Chat, that's why I'll send. I'll start sending you stuff singly. I'll open up my Instagram. And it'll be like seventy-five missing mess, missed messages from the horror show oh, chat. No, me that's man. not. I mean, look at <laughs> it's kind of like a little matte finish. I just oh, realized I'll, that, check, I'll keep checking. I'll send it to you singly from now. Thank on. You. I bad, just look because I see that that I got like one hundred and twenty missed messages, and then like eighty-nine of them are scar pad weird stretching about shit. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it'll be back on there for five bucks. So, because actually this one came with like a den or two, so I was gonna try to return it, and I couldn't because they're sold out. But that's dope, though. This honestly, this movie is always on sale for five bucks. So you can know it. Like I bought one and two. For five bucks one before um, how many copies of evil dead do you have probably like three or four i own four <laughs> copies I own... that's definitely the movie i have probably bought the most is the let's see so wait army of darkness i probably own nine copies of no, wow. i own four I copies of the yeah i own four copies of the theatrical i own uh three copies of the international i own three copies of the director's cut so actually i own 10 copies wow yeah. 10 copies of army of darkness wow and then i own evil dead three times i own evil dead two three times and then i just own the army or the evil dead versus ash or whatever the series mm -hmm. just one time <laughs> nice. but i do own them on digital so i guess Two times, maybe you could count. I that had the steel book. You could have had three. Well, I'm trying to get the Evil Dead Two steel book because I own the Army of Darkness steel book. That's the only reason I picked up that Evil Dead because it was five bucks, and I was like, I think you should sell like, everything like and just keep own. the Army of Darkness movies. Yeah. No, I, no. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but yeah, Dead I want to get Evil Dead Two on steel book so I could own all three because I do. I those are just some of my all time favorites. But I got this for like six bucks. And I hear it's a really good Blu-ray. They did like a full-out transfer for it, and I only own the DVD, so I was like, for six bucks, fuck yeah. The, the old one uh -huh. or the new one? This the old one, yeah. But they did like Mick Garris and the guys worked with Paramount to do like a, a real transfer on it, so it's supposed to be a good Blu-ray. Because if you obviously the DVD looks like a TV movie, this one, dude, you gotta pick it up just for the slip, bro. Christmas. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. nice. And it was like 12 nice. bucks, too. Literally. Like, I like how they made the band uh, silver, not like blue, like everything else. Yeah, bro. The Isn't slip cool? is really cool, man. Yeah, uh, it's got a little cool. shininess. And then, like, the embossed lettering. I wasn't going to get it, but I'm ordering it now. Fuck you, dude. dude. Flop. Sorry, brother. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> brother, but you better get it before the slip sells. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I got this for four bucks. Keanu Reeves Speed. Nice. Oh, nice. Oh, Classic. Yeah. I got yeah. this for 10 bucks, and with the VHS cover, you 
can't deny it. I think I actually oh. have this. I might have showed this last week. Um, He's yeah. doing the Marky Mark thing. <laughs> and uh, Starpad sent me a little care package, too. Hold on. He actually sent me a couple from Amazon. Which, speaking of, Michael Crichton's Westworld. Oh, nice. That's a dope cover. Well, I'm able to watch nice. that. Uh, Deliverance, which I haven't seen this in a while. And another underrated, like Robin, underrated Robin Williams film, One Hour Five. Oh, yeah. yeah. I always thought that was a great film. Dude, I don't know if I've ever seen Deliverance, man. Is is that kind of a horror? Or is it like a thriller? Like, is that something it's that... A woods, is, it's a woods. Yeah, it's a hick. Woods. I mean, I know it's, get, it's, 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 it's an it's elevated it. horror for the grindhouse driving cinema. Oh, Squeal like a pig. Are you? I've heard. Um, Is that the one with um John Voight? Yes. Yeah, John okay. Voight and Burt Reynolds, and then uh, Scarpad sent me a little care package. Twilight Zone nice. season five. Beautiful. Best of Abbott and Lou Costello, nice. see, or mm. volume three. Which I already have volume two, so now I got two and three. Got a good one for the Star Wars collection. Some would say one of the best Disney Star Wars movies that they've ever put out. Rogue One. I yes, it. sir. Yeah. I, needed, I needed this because I didn't yes, have it. Sir. And it came with the slip. Nice, nice, gorgeous slip. So thank you, Scarpad. Uh, probably one of Star, Scarpad's favorite Star Trek movies ever. J.J. Oh, Abrams. Oh, oh that's, 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 that's the first one's good. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love that trilogy. Before I don't know why get... I get so much hate. I think they... so oh, yeah, the trilogy as a whole, whole isn't bad. Yeah. Yeah. I really enjoyed the first one. Because the second one sucks yeah. ass. That's why, y'all. The second the one. Third third darkness was not. Come on, though. Darkness made monkey chunks. People people always say the first one is iconic. Then everyone said the second was incredible since they thought it couldn't be topped. But I fucking love Psycho yeah. 3. I Psycho. love Psycho 3. Psycho 3 I is the sexiest that. Psycho movie, Dude. brother. We got Jeff Fahey with Jeff nude, Fahey, with his guitar baby. covering his junk. Jeff, don't <laughs> touch the guitar. Right? Chick from the uh, Summer Party you. Massacre 2 in that movie, Anthony man. Perkins, uh yeah. directorial debut, I believe. I, just, I love this film. I love yeah, it. No, they that were is when Psycho really came into the 80s, bro. I, Dude, like, I love up. that film so much. Um, Psycho 2 was yeah. great, too. Yeah, Psycho 2 was amazing. Man. Oh, hell yeah. I, I'm not denying that. I was, Psycho I 2 is like, like Exorcist 3, bro. It's next I love, level. I, love, <laughs> I, love Psycho, I even like Psycho 4, but dude, Psycho 3 is a banger, man. Banger. Um, movie I'd never seen or heard of. Um, the Day After. I don't know if any of you guys have. It says John. Who's Lewis, in it? Right? Oh, John. Lewis. Okay. It's a nuclear uh, Armageddon movie. Nuclear. They um, have the nuclear holocaust. It was, I'll check you it should out. Watch it. I'll definitely check it out. Um, Charles Heston and Earthquake. Mm. This is one I love. This and I absolutely love this cover. Joe Dante's Matinee. Nice. Love that good. cover. It's a great um, movie, man. Great movie. The Adventures of Ford Fairlane. Fuck yeah, dude! Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, Andrew Dice Clay. I, 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 I didn't. Know, I've never heard of this. So I'm little Muffet sat on a Muffet. You like it? <laughs> I'm glad you said something, Robbie, because I had a feeling you might. Um, oh, Tingler, which is a movie I've never seen, but I know is in like That's so many iconic movie. horror films. That was one of those uh like movies that that Feeling dude did movie. where like you would put like shockers in the seats and yeah. shit. Right? Right. Oh. oh yeah, that was one of the first movies I think. Um, never seen this, but just from looking at the back of it, I think I'm in Mel Brooks Blazing Saddles, and I mean, you've oh, never, yeah. seen, yeah. Blazing you never seen Blazing Saddles. Blazing Saddles? That. What? Oh, that's no, about to be your new favorite movie, man. Oh, really? I love that movie. Kidding me? That's they don't. The they cannot movies. make Blazing Saddles today. It would oh, never dude, be. By the way, <laughs> by the way. Ever. They they just did Hulu released History yeah, of the World Part Two. Oh. I, I, all I've seen is Part One. Me, Brooks, and Jelani watched that the other night it's together. Horrible. We were rolling on the fucking floor. You liked it? Hi, but we were yeah. rolling on the fucking floor. I loved it. I, I loved the first it's episode. Hilarious, bro. Part One is, it is it good? another movie they can't make today. Like. How are you gonna say it sucks if you haven't seen it? 
The Incredible Oh, Hulk. nice. I love that series. Yeah. Look at that cover. Oh, lenticular I know, cover, right? baby. It's that lenticular I cover, I loved the man. show when I was a kid. Uh, yeah, me too. Every time you watch it now, Season you just two? notice little fucking Crocs that he's wearing. Oh, no. <laughs> it looks like every season has that, that except except season two it was the only one that didn't have the holographic. Hmm, that's weird. Isn't that weird? Yep, every season, but season two. Season they're two. like season two sucked. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool covers, man. Oh, yeah. And then season five. That's that's our pad cool. must have gotten the uh, complete collection. Blu-ray. I got that's the Blu-ray. Awesome. <laughs> That's a cool set, man. That's a really yeah. cool set. Yeah. Uh, a series I've never heard of, but this looks crazy. This looks like some Team America shit. Captain America. America. Gotta watch it. It's cool. Uh, it looks yeah. like literally. It looks oh, like man. some Team Can America. Can we review shit. Team America? Can Dude. we review Team America? Or would it be canceled? I don't know. Deadwood. Oh, that would be canceled. Probably. Well, South Park's <laughs> still going. Complete first season of Deadwood. One of the great shows of all time, right oh, there. Yeah, I've never <laughs> seen it. One of my favorite animated movies of all time. Master Best Batman, Batman movie. Batman's not Best animated. Man. It's it's up animated? There. It's you called the animated. animated series, bro. Oh, my God. He thought you said anime. I thought you said anime. Mask of Faith Adam is still the best Batman movie. Criterion release of Days and Confused. Nice. awesome. Classic film. Got the 4K. So. All right, all right, all right. Mm. Yep, you got the 4K, so I got the Blu-ray. Star Pad keeps getting older, and the girls still won't talk to him. I love that one. Yeah. <laughs> Burt Reynolds, Smokey, and the Bandit. Nice. Uh, we got on 4K, well, probably my favorite of the trilogy, of the original trilogy, Star Wars: The Last Jedi. No, it's not. Return of the Last Jedi. <laughs> Return of the Last Jedi. <laughs> what? what? Return of the last Jedi. Jedi. I'm sorry. They, they shouldn't be copying the fuck. You mean Return movie. of the Jedi? <laughs> Return of the Have Jedi. Have you ever seen a Star Wars movie? You don't know what Blazing <laughs> Saddles is. You don't know what Return of the Jedi is. I know. I just said it's my favorite. Escape from New York. Cool. Nice. Cover. You, sure that, you sure that's not Escape from Guantanamo Bay? Like, what the fuck, man? Yeah, Have you ever seen that one? Yeah, I've seen that. It's one. John Carpenter. No, it's White Castle. <laughs> 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 I mean, Harold and Kumar. <laughs> um, and hey, I I told you. Right now. <laughs> when I saw this, bro, I was so fucking hype. And Robbie will know why, because this is a hard one to get. And I don't care that it's on DVD. I should have done The Blu ray is like 100 plus. Shit. Give it back. Fucking near dark. Oh, Fuck no. yeah. You own, it. You, own it. you own the Blu ray, Scar. I got the Blu ray. The, right the DVD is only like. 15, but it's, all, yeah, it's, it's always hard to find a good copy. It, it's like, coming out on 4K. That's so, such oh, a good is set. It? Like, open it up and show everybody the set. Yeah, that's a nice set. Have that, the, the documentary on it. They all have that book. That's back when they made really nice DVDs yeah. and had nice sets. You know, Blu ray, they don't give, give you much of a Blu ray, but the DVDs also. Like, it was discount. Sure everybody. DVDs are going to be worth more than Blu rays. Probably. I think you're right. Look at this. Absolutely. This is the best part, man. Yeah. Shit. Yeah, they, and these, this, sir. Hey, Dylan, send that back to me. I, I, I should have sent that to you. Look at that. Can <laughs> uh, you send that back? Nice. No. Candy, Every bro. piece of this packaging has one of the characters with a quote. Like it's fucking amazing, man. Night yeah. has its price. It's true. They made it's better sets back in the DVD days. There's a fly yeah. the They're gonna be worth for less DVD. Yeah, for the South, we lost. We keep odd hours. And they got their name on each one. And it comes with a little booklet. Dude, I, I wonder who's going to do 4K. I wonder what company. Uh, by side, it is coming out soon. It is coming soon, yeah. It is coming soon. <laughs> but lately, <laughs> but lately, they've been releasing... We're probably going to have a new... <laughs> lately, they've been releasing the 4Ks without Blu-rays in them, so... Right. Well, it depends what company does it. And I'm sure that's going to have all the bonus features and shit on it. Probably going to have more. Too bad they can't interview. You know. That was done by the woman that did the Hurt Locker, right? Yeah, Catherine Bigelow, man. One of the greatest directors of all time, man. Oh, yeah. Hurt Locker is great. I was watching that. Hurt Locker, she did uh, did some great stuff. Uh, What the fuck else? Uh, Jesus. Did she do? Oh, no. She didn't do um, Virgin Suicides, did she? 
No, no, that was um, Sophia Coppola. Coppola's daughter. No, what was the fucking uh, the movie, the the biker movie with Willem Dafoe from back in the day? She did that, The Fearless or something like that. Mm. Also did Zero Dark Thirty. Yeah, so oh, she did Zero Dark Thirty. Yeah. Dude, that literally that near oh, dark. Oh, fuck! I'm so stupid. Thing, did uh, Point thing. Break is the other. Oh, mm, no the way. way. And she did Point Break. Strange Days. Done? I know a lot of people like Strange Days. She did Strange Days. Is that the one with Guy Pierce? Or no, or, um, Strange Days. I remember is with uh, no, uh, Angela days. Bassett and like Juliet Lewis. Yeah, right? yeah, she yeah who's the guy days, in it? Guy Pierce. Yeah. It's not Guy Pierce. Who is it? Or it's, uh, was it Keanu Reeves? Or no, it's, um, it's, uh, Ray Fiends. Right. Okay. I always get those. Yeah, Ray. I always get them confused. <sighs> Even though they don't. Look Voldemort, anymore. man. No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we all know when people read that too. comment. <laughs> I got cars like what? What are you doing? Alrighty, I go next. <laughs> what a transition that was! Well, thank you to Two Gun Pedro. For this burial ground t shirt sent to me this week. I wasn't expecting it, but you know, Pedro, he goes overboard. He didn't just send me this, a 5.0 banger, but he sent me another one that tops. Well, it doesn't top it. This is a better one. But if it, another 5.0 banger, because you know, if you're going to do a 5.0 burial ground, yeah, I gotta get a Kingdom of the Spiders teacher. Oh my with William God. Shatner. Two five o oh. horror movies, classics of 70s cinema. Yeah, you know and Pedro got those custom made. <laughs> yeah, and I'm gonna be Pedro. wearing this right it, after my burial ground shirt, man. Kingdom of the Spiders. Good ones last. <laughs> and uh, he also sent because He's too good, Pedro. I got Invisible Maniac. Oh, nice. Nice. Look at that. And look at this. Look at that. Hey. So Talk that's what we got. I've never seen that. I want to watch it. And he got me a trauma movie because I'm all about trauma films. Terra Firma. Could, could be the oh, next that's time. a good movie, man. I was going to say it could be the next Burial Ground. Could be Burial Ground. ground. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that movie's that movie's dumb as shit, but I love that movie, man. Right. That movie so that's ever. that's what two guns, two bangers, two t-shirt bangers that I'm gonna be proud to wear on this mountain of a man. So you should because you're the only one who owns those. Mm-hmm. Also, I picked up Westworld because we're watching this on Monday on Sci-Fi Sojourns. Make sure you watch it. It's on HBO Max too. So Westworld, a class. Mm. This is my favorite. <laughs> Damn. I got one yeah. off photo too. Look at that. How did that happen? Oh, nice. Unbelievable. Oh, photo. But then I also found a copy. I was watching this. This movie probably should be our next movie for post burial ground because this is burial ground 2.0. You guys love it. It's the mm. Freak Maker with Donald Southern, oh, Donald, so Southern, Donald Pleasance. That's a sick cover. From 1969. The pre- I, I bet it's this. terrible, but that's a sick I got cover. This on, I got this on, I got it on eBay, and it's also starring Tom Baker, who's the doctor. <laughs> and there's the back cover. Look at that. Oh, my God. What could be worse than Burial Ground? Um, <laughs> this, mo- this movie, you should, you should do, Dylan. So this will be my next pick, The Freak Makers. You get I'll another pick day. three, four years. I'm going to be out yeah. of town. <laughs> <this weekend. laughs> I don't feel good. Hell of the Living Dead in 4K. It's a sick That's cover, interesting. too. I never yeah. heard of that. Look at that. This is uh, by uh, a Spanish director. That'd be his name. Steven Spielberg. Bruno Mateo. Yeah. <laughs> That's, uh, <laughs> That's <laughs> Becker. So, Hell of the Living Dead. That is gnarly, no doubt. Yeah. A lost, a lost Anthony Perkins discovers the Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, and Cocaine, The Edge of Sanity. No. Oh, I like that cover. Mm -hmm. Cover's dope. 
and he becomes Doctor Mister Hyde, high on coke and killing prostitutes in England. <laughs> Too good fun. This movie I watched on freebie. Uh, I never saw the first one. I never saw the second one, but I started watching it. I'm not going to say it's a good movie. It's probably a bad movie, but I couldn't take my eyes off it for two reasons. Natasha Leone, who's great in it, and um, fucked up, uh, what's his face there? Uh, who the hell is that guy? Uh, Vincent Gallo, who's nuts in all his movies. He plays a transvestite and done in this one. Uh, oh. This is Freeway let confessions of a trick baby now this is out of print trick baby though this is an old out of print disc on you know you can't get it anywhere so i i went to ebay paid 30 bucks for this because i was so impressed by this flick announced on uh vinegar syndrome 4k the next day so i think you, you know, know it. that's that scarf oh. effect bro that's a good effect when you so bought me copies did you buy so i bought it was I bought already the, out yeah, we got the 4K too. It's Scarf had one, one copy of that, and they were like, "Dude, our sales just boosted 2,000." <laughs> 4K, is, 4K is coming. This yeah. one's going out to some place so in you Cleveland. Paid 50 bucks for the movie, really? Dylan keeps on saying, <laughs> "Keep on upgrading." Hey, I enjoy. I thought it was a pretty fun movie. You know, I don't think Dylan appreciates you and your okay. conversation, so you should you should send those. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I, I appreciate it. Greater. It's fine. All right, I've never heard of this one, but I, I want to watch it. 4K. Yeah. I bet, I bet you do. Does that, that title? Of course, with a nice slip. And... It's like two of my favorite things. Hey, there we go. Bro, that's that. what I'm talking that's about right there, man. Yeah. It is a pretty good movie. Massage Parlor Mur- Mur- It is a pretty is good movie. Good? Is it really good? Yep. Is that got a Blu ray in it? Well, he thinks Black Love is hilarious. So. Black you know what? I can't trust you, Scarpet. I'm sorry. Yeah, we can't. Yeah, Braille, ground hey, no, Let's not forget that. that. Black Love is a great movie. All right. <laughs> from 1968 from Filmation, cookie cutter animation TV, but still fantastic. The Adventures of Batman from 1969. Yeah, this that's good stuff. Is that the one where Adam Pop. West and Burt Ward played the voices, right? They do the uh, No, part? it's the one actually before that, but I think they did oh, play the voices yeah. of this one too. And, um, Came out in '68, and it's lasted one season for like 40 episodes, and it's goofy as hell, but it's kind of fun. Because the other one's the new adventures, isn't it? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, those are some fun things, like the Aquaman (laughs) series from that era. I absolutely love. Yeah. (laughs) And then I and I finally got my Scream number one Steelbook. Nice. That's Steelbook. Dude, I highly recommend. And they've already announced Scream Six Steelbook. You can order it up on. Uh, I already on, uh, pre-ordered Amazon. I gotta own them all in Steelbook. They're I'm sure it'll be on the cock, so. Even Vern owns the regular, and he's like, "Damn it!" <laughs> if I thought I could bend up being able to get them all for a reasonable bit, I would. I'd get one for sure. Maybe you. Maybe you could sell yours. Right, but then I'll be Absolutely. stuck fucking paying whatever it is for Absolutely. part two. and Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? So I'll yeah. Don't tell them, Link. Don't tell them. Don't tell them. <laughs> Let them be, <laughs> Let them be Link. Don't say that. If we ever get a screen two that has just Timothy Oliphant on the cover, I'll buy the fuck out of it. Man. I'll buy 10 oh, copies. Oh, God. 10 copies. Sir, just Link. replace it with a justified slip. I mean, I'm sorry. Timothy Oliphant is only the hottest fucking dude ever. Like, sorry. <laughs> Just saying. Got Link, man. my brother, did you have anything? <laughs> oh no, 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 no. Bro, I don't know you got something. Yeah, I got a little. I got a little something. All right, so I don't think Vern does. Do you? Vern I got that comic know? book. I'll show you. That, that's all I okay. have. Well, let him finale with that because mine aren't that impressive. But I got this Peeps Pepsi. <laughs> oh, <I> mean, <laughs> interesting. That seems like it'd be a good fit, bro. I'm going to be taste testing this I'm going to be taste testing this on Rock and Robbie Live tomorrow night. Oh. So there's this little known like horror know. franchise that is come that has a new movie out called Scream Six, and I got this really awesome fucking cup at my no, nice. AMC. <laughs> it's lenticular. Oh, Look at this. Oh, that was yeah. AMC. Look at that. Oh, you got AMC, you said. There's Cinemark. Cinemark didn't have the popcorn tubs. They didn't have them. They didn't have them. You got to order it online. Not only do they have this cup, but there are three different ghost face toppers, and they pop right off. What do you mean three different? There's like three masks? different ones. It's ghost face that like, but it's just different like uh, 
like okay. one's like this, one's like this, one's like oh. this or something. But like it comes right off, and it's a little like action figure. Soda. How cool is that, man? Yeah. So if you're gonna Dude, overpay for a awesome. soda, you <laughs> might as well get a cool collector's cup, right? Yeah. So that's cool. That I actually really haven't cool. bought. And, I'm sorry. What was that? I said that cup is really cool. Yeah, I love it, dude. I, my favorite thing is the ghost face that appears and reappears. Yeah, that's cool. It's so cool, dude. And it looks like it. the original. I was such a nerd, video. dude. I went by myself. I got dropped off by this chick I'm seeing, right? I got <laughs> dropped off at the movie theater by myself, and she was even like, be safe, have fun, call me when you're done. And I'm like walking there by myself with my money to go get the <laughs> back in. <laughs> she had something to do all right so i haven't really bought a lot of blu-rays lately but this just so happened to kind of co, co like coalesce together but i have a few movies to show off but i finally got the my dementia 13 i gotta get this okay it was like 10 bucks right it's and restaurant's amazing because while. everything comes with a slip and this is one of the earliest uh, Francis Ford Coppola films. Yeah. So, oh, wow. I don't see myself I, watching it anytime soon. So I'm I, like, when I'm ready to watch it, I, I tell you what, though, I like this. And I initially, like, back in the early 2000s, in the early aughts, as the kids say today, so there was like this uh, AMC Monster Fest. You remember that shit when they would do AMC yeah. Monster Fest? So they had right. like the series of, of DVDs that would have four movies on like a, a $10 DVD. And at the time, and like, 2002 that was like mind-boggling that was cool yeah and that's when i first watched dementia 13 was on one of those horror movie? Movie. yeah it's a horror movie and it's really good and very fucking trippy oh, francis Ford, that doesn't look like a horror movie i mean no i just i didn't know Cop coppola uh yeah dude they all horror. start with horror man they like, always do they always do all right yeah. so i finally got some of my uh stuff that i crowdfunded in but i got my copy of in search of tomorrow oh, nice, nice. I, love, I want it's to a see it. That sounds well, let me know. Yeah, it is. And well, well, and when I got this, it came with a little thing, and I knew that they were doing In Search of Darkness, ninety four through or ninety through ninety four, but they I, I didn't know they were doing a part two of this. So that's really yes. I've never seen this one, y'all. So I'm really. Oh man! Yeah, yeah, so yeah, of yeah, course, when you watch it, because I watch it at the same time, bro. Nice. So of course, I got that because it came in, y'all. In yeah, Search of Darkness boy. Part 3. The masterpiece is here. Dude, it is so freaking good. And I haven't opened it up yet, but this is going to have reverse. Honestly, that might be my favorite. No. Oh, I don't know which is my favorite one. They're Dude, all I'll so tell you good. what. So, you know, when you crowdfund these, you get your names in the credits. You get all this extra stuff. Three little mini posters came. I should have I should have grabbed them. One is this cover. Yeah. Right? Uh -huh. So I got a poster of that, and that's nice. The problem I is like I got that. the posters of two and three, but I never... I didn't get part one until two came out, so I don't have that. Yeah. Then there's a poster of this one, but there's nice. another poster that's like a video store with yeah. all these like cool fucking VHS of all of our favorite. They did, that for, two. They did that for two as well. Exactly. So if you if you are not a horror fan and you watch In Search of Darkness number one, you're gonna want to buy a bunch of movies that you yeah. don't have. And yep. if you are a casual fan and you watch part two, <laughs> you're going to find. Um, some movies you want to see. It's going to cost you money. But if you are the most hardcore of horror fans like I am, <laughs> I've only seen 20% of the fucking movies in here. So the, there's a Because you're casual. And you're going to want to You're casual. Bro, they're talking about Thai films from Thailand. Yeah. You no, know I haven't watched Thai you fucking horror. I'm sorry. Get international in this. Probably can't I know even that's get what the they movie. do. You probably can't even get the movie in the States, that one that's from Thailand. Well, it's on YouTube. I found oh, it nice. on YouTube and I started watching it. But anyway, oh, that's yeah. what I got. Good shit. Good no, shit. Wait. This my uh my brother in law just gave me this. Yeah, he, he pulled it nice. out and had it forever. Yeah, boy. <laughs> it is. I wonder if you guys know about this. Like I found issue yeah. one online, but I could not find issue three. So I don't know if it stops there, Marvel but it's issue number two back in the days, bro. Yeah. Wow. Nineteen eighty nine. I don't know if you can really tell, but it's like it's not normal comic book size. It's like magazine size. So yeah, the art is Sam Keith, right on the back. Yeah, well, yeah. I was gonna finish with that because that's so the cool awesome. part. <laughs> it's, it's the same format as like Savage Tales and the Dracula books they did. And shit. Oh wow! Some the, yeah, I mean the interior art. I was it's pretty fucking solid too. Black and white, but it it fits. Anyway, but then the best part oh, yeah. by far, dude. I flipped it over and like 
That just uh, kills yeah. me. That's gorgeous. Yeah. So sick yeah. line work and just like the, the shadow. Yeah. What, what would you call it? Like, like, there's no the outline inking? and shit. There's no holding uh, line, right? Yeah. 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 It's like those, uh, those variants you were seeing a little bit ago. Anyway, it's sick as hell, dude. The negative so, yeah. space. Yeah. That's, I'm in a, search that's for a, issue number one's like 50 bucks or like 30 really? to 50 bucks out yeah. there, I think. So was there, was there a saw. thing that Marvel didn't publish in the 80s? Like, right. Jesus. No, Star yeah. Wars Transformers. Everything. Had it all. Heathcliff. Thundercats. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Thundercats. Yo, yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Did it all, man. Alf. Well, oh. Alf. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's going to wrap up the show tonight, my brothers. Let's kick off. What do we got coming again this week? We got this Monday. Sorry, brother. We got <laughs> 10, 45 p.m. Eastern on Scarpad Domain. He's reviewing Michael Crichton's Westworld. And then right after on Pop Culture Philosophers, Robbie and his crew, which Scarpad and Steph will be joining, he's reviewing... Brian De Palma's Dress to Kill to continue March Madness. Nice. And then to continue next Saturday, we got Dugan Pedro's recommendation, Triangle. And if everything goes right, this Thursday, 7.30 p.m. Eastern, we should be doing Scream 6 review. <laughs> and then uh, if everything goes right, Friday, should be doing a couple more episodes of The Zone. So, nice. We'll have to see. We'll, we'll, it should be a damn good week. Damn oh, good yeah. week. Oh, yeah. So, as always, man, I appreciate everyone coming and hanging. Can I say one more thing, real quick? Real quick. Tomorrow, noon time central. And don't forget about the time change tonight, but at noon tomorrow central, oh, Rom D cool. having a conversation with us again at PCP. Yeah. That's the most important nice. thing that's been said all night. Don't forget about the <laughs> time change. Well, yes, well that's done. right. <laughs> Everyone's like, fuck. Hey, we we now, right? Before we get out of here, I don't want to forget about you, my brother. Yeah, man. Um, if, if by chance Rom V is not your thing, if it, by chance, with a doubt, but head on over to IG Live. Uh, Blaine Fable and his amazing friends. We're going to have an episode at 1 p.m. Eastern on IG Live. Uh, our guest right is, yeah, our, our guest is... Um, uh, Manny, Island Boy Manuel, he's our guest, nice. and 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 Nick couldn't make tomorrow's show, so I got a couple of uh, special co-hosts that he invi- I invited over. So, but I want to keep it a surprise. So tune in to to see that, and then um, the following Saturday we're coming back again, man. Where where my guest will be missing Link, man. Nice, uh, my oh, brother. Yeah. So yeah, hey, man. man. And I'm sorry that we got two shows at the same time, but don't worry. I found out no, that daylight man. savings time does happen in the UK, but not until like a few more weeks. So wrong, <laughs> the wrong fucking time. I don't know. So I don't know what's gonna happen. I'm like, um, Streamyard told me it was Central Standard Time. I'm like, no, it's not gonna be Central. I I'm so <laughs> stressed about it. Man, to be honest. That's before, wild. Uh, yeah. Last thing though, before I forget, my boy Verno switched his YouTube page to a blood splatter chatter. He went full horror. Oh. Oh. I mean, I. I haven't put anything up or did anything, but I did. I did make some moves. I made some moves. He pulled the gun, man. man. He went from comics to horror, man. No, 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 no. <laughs> so, and, short, uh, you got you got a good debut show in the in the works, man. Hell yeah! Right, I'm just saying because you got me yeah. on it, so that's I gonna do. be dope. <laughs> hell yeah! No, yeah, yeah. I, I appreciate it, man. He, yeah. I don't know if he's still doing the Thursday show, but if not, I'm guessing. Very soon, he will have a top five show with him and Robbie. It was supposed to be this Thursday, but I believe we're going to do the Scream 6 instead. Right. Um, yeah, we're going to be well. doing the top five best favorite. That's the key word there. Favorite directors of all time. So we're going to go back Ooh. and forth. Each of us have a top five. As far as horror goes. Horror uh, horror directors of all time. Yes. Oh, Thank and, you. And you, were, and you were not first, okay? I did a live with Verno. We That's talked right. about that. That was on Instagram. Okay. Though, no one cares about Instagram. Okay? <laughs> no. Oh, I'm just kidding. Your show isn't on IG? I'm going back and forth. I'm, I'm, I'm just bouncing around. I said, fuck it. Let's do the YouTube. But, dude, that was great. That was a shitload of fun, though. So that's another one. Go check that out. Where we talked X sure. with Fable on IG. 
I figured no one would be, yeah. be in there. Then I realized, like, fuck, I'm with Fable. I'm on IG. Right. Everyone's gonna be in there. It was, it was a good. It was a good uh, haul. If you're doing IG, cool. make sure you bring Fable. Right. Right. Out of right. Out of everybody in the PC crew, the bad, bad Fable, you are the dominator of IG, bro. Oh, that's sure. that's sure. why I don't even fuck with IG because like Fable just got it locked. This motherfucker's got a hashtag every day, man, and everybody's fucking. That's why I'm trying to see sexy women in my fucking feed, man. I'm in. Interrupted by Fable's hashtags. God damn it. <laughs> you see sexy sets. He's got the game <laughs> yeah, sexy sets. Where's that? When we got hey, man. And, and I'm over there on that side spreading the PCP message, man. Catch all our guys. Yeah, he is. The Army PCP. He's got that bag. Dylan's Harvest Show, everything, man. The okay. fire is stories. The fire is emoji emotes and stuff. Uh, emojis <laughs> on his stories, man. I'm telling you. Every That's time he brother. makes like a, a thumbnail for my. I'm like, sorry, bro. You want good advertising? Yeah, Go to Fable, bro. He'll hook you up, bro. <laughs> yeah. but I didn't even know you could do that on the fucking story. That's what Scarpad says. He's like, how the fuck do you do that? And I'm like, I can't just... do that shit. Like, it's locked was... me out of it. I can't put music on I... stories. I and can shit. do some of it, but my shit just does not look. That shit's simple. It's Fables. Yeah. Fables, it's so yeah. simple. And I'm like, Fables just made that shit look high tech as fuck, bro. Like, thank you, bro. Yeah, he's, a pro. That, man. he's a pro. He's a pro. Um, but thank you guys for hanging tonight, man. We love you. Um, sorry for the technical difficulties at the beginning. I'm gonna try to get it worked out. Might have to get me a new fucking computer, like I said. But uh, we'll we'll I see you this week, man. Yeah, we got a lot coming. March Madness continues. It's gonna be fun as hell. Got a lot of good shit coming. Ooh. Got a lot of good shit coming. Hell yeah. I hope you all have a great rest of your weekend, man. You guys stay safe. Thank you all for hanging. Sorry I wasn't so active in the chat. I was just kind of, I not I wasn't on my laptop tonight, so it was a little different than normal. So I love all you guys. Did not forget about you guys. Have a great one. We'll see you next time. Peace out.